This conference will now be recorded. All right. Good. Well, again, I'll say good morning again. <laughs> for everybody, everybody listening. Um, I'm, we're, I, we've talked a little bit about it, and we're hoping that we can get through the last couple um, discussion items of today. Then our intent moving forward is that we'll put together a, a summary report uh, for the commissioner's review, but before it goes to the commissioners, we will circulate it to all of you. If um, if there are any comments or things that you want to add into it, please let us know. We're hoping that we can do that digitally, that uh, you can just email us with additional points. But if anybody feels that, well, we completely missed the mark on something and we should get back together, we can definitely get back together uh, one more time and, and talk through any of those, hopefully in a short, short meeting. Um, then once we have the, the report to a, a final uh, stage, we will schedule a work session with the county commissioners and you all will be invited to that so that it, uh, you can talk directly to the commissioners as we um, talk through the various topics. And um, um, that will be uh, probably a public, um, I think it'll be a public meeting, um, but um, not open for the public to, to comment on, but if anybody wants to show up and listen in person, um, that sort of thing. Do you have a time frame for that? Um, as soon as possible. <laughs> so um, then as far as the rest of the process, I think I've explained this, is that once the commissioners make a decision on kind of their feeling on the direction that they want to go, they then by law have to push it to the Planning and Zoning Commission for their consideration and input. So we would then go through a process with Planning and Zoning Commission, um, depending on whether they want to have meetings and discussions and, and so on. Um, they would come up with a recommendation, which goes back to the Board of County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. The Board of County Commissioners would then have a, um, a public meeting, a public hearing on specific code changes, and then, um, then they would adopt those changes. So a lot of work yet to be done, and you all are, are absolutely welcome at every step of that process. So, um, but with that, I'll turn it over to Brenda to take us through the last a uh, couple of items for discussion. Under specific materials, we had to finish decommission, the decommission discussion, and then we had to set a criteria, sorry, and then talk about solar panel materials. Um, so, wanted to get through those two things and then the items we had under other, like that didn't fit into those two things. And I added the lighting and signage that Cheryl brought up last week. And then after that, um, we can review the handout that had an option we've already discussed to make sure that there's anything we missed or whatever that we that needs to be clarified or whatever in that. Okay. So I don't know if there might be anything that changes as we go through the rest of this discussion. So we'll do that part next. So if you could be your first handout, which is getting shorter each week. <laughs> That would be topics for work group discussion at the top. And so the first thing as mentioned, decommissioning. Um, we already obviously want to require a decommissioning plan. Um, we've talked about, I think that we, the only number we really threw out was making it four months rather than six um, from the mm -hmm. In activity. Um, other than that, I don't think there were any other decisions on the decommissioning yet. I think we talked a lot about the, um, the, the bond and the, the resources and the funding and stuff, which mm -hmm. is part of the yeah. so which we are, which we already yeah. require that we're like all kinds of projects, not just. And, I, and we talked about revisiting the, the bond amount every five years to make sure that that, that amount that's bonded is staying in tune with changes in technology, changes in costs, and, and so on. So I'm understanding that's pretty typical. Yes. As well, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've seen that in a couple other um, codes. So I wanted to talk about the four months sure. um, of inactivity. I think that may be too short a time frame given 
let's say there's something, some uh, piece of equipment that needs to be replaced that can't be sourced that quickly. I think there needs to be a, a longer period of time. Um, there could be some, you know, some of the supply chain issues like we've had over the last few years that could prevent some equipment coming in. Um, so I think there needs to be a little bit longer time frame than four months. Okay. Well, I, I understand and don't disagree with what you're saying, but my vision would be that if something is in the works, where do you start the counting of the days? Mm -hmm. So well, in a, let's maybe we need to define what inactivity yeah. is. So in my mind, mm -hmm. inactivity is no electricity flowing into the grid. Is that everyone's mm -hmm. yeah, think that definition right. right? So something could go wrong, and a piece of equipment could you know fail and need to be replaced before energy flows again, or there could be a decision to shut it down for some reason. And those are two different things. And who's identifying the inactivity? I, I believe BG and A will. They'll, they'll be the first person to see it. I mean, the, the solar developer will see that nothing is being produced, but also BG and E will see that nothing is being pushed to the ground. I think we need a definitive on that in order to begin the countdown. So there's a couple different, like you said, there's a couple different ways it could happen. It could mm -hmm. be that. If the solar company is has planned the inactivity, we'll say inactivity, it could be end of life, it could be like whatever reason, um, then we might want to require them to notify the property owner in the county, and then that would have a trigger to it, which may be different than if they just don't have electricity flowing in the grid anymore. Right. And they, it is monitored, it's monitored remotely, but it is monitored so they will know when there's an issue. It's not like it's going to go for months without someone noticing. I know, we're kind of speaking vaguely here, and there may already be a plan in place for this through um, EG&E, through the Public Service yes. Commission, mm -hmm. yes. um, you know, some kind, and through the, the state bill maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but so I think that we need a definitive and when that in activity and the process of how that's reported. Oh, I would disagree. Yeah. I say it may be, it could be that it's different depending on why it and mm -hmm. why there's mm -hmm. there's a mm -hmm. stoppage. Right. So if it, if it is something like you're saying, like if it's a supply chain issue from something coming from China, which most likely it will be, because that's where most mm -hmm. of these solar panels are produced, um, then you know maybe there's a different plan for that. Like how long do we let it go? Um, why, that, why is that an issue? Because we need to have a time limit on that. We're not Let's say there's just this way a piece of part. equipment fails and they're waiting for a replacement, no matter where it comes from. Why is that an issue to the county or the citizens of the county that that solar farm is not producing it? As long as everything else is being maintained. Right. right. Yeah. And that's my issue is when do you when is the fault of other topics other than producing electric mm -hmm. the process? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's all, I'm going to exaggerate. It's all grown up, it looks like. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when do you start the clock on, on that issue? And that issue would probably be when someone complained about it and we started an investigation. Well, I think we need that defined somehow. But that's I mean, defined in the case. I think we need to be careful here. You can't put right, so, so many requirements right. in this specific tax amendment that it's overly burdensome. There are other mechanisms within the county that address these issues. Overly burdensome to who? To, 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 to everyone. Companies and to, no, it's it's a burden on the county. So we well. wouldn't have any we wouldn't have any time limit in that. We're just saying it won't matter because it's already there and it's a good there. It doesn't matter if it produces electricity or not. I, you know, I just don't think that that's okay. valid. But I don't understand why it's an issue. Let's say there was a gas station on a corner and the gas station goes out of business, but it's sitting there empty. I mean, nobody likes to look at that either, but the county's not coming in and saying, when are you going to decommission these, you know, gas pumps and gas tanks? So you how saying there should not be a No, no, I'm saying that if there's a if the project is ended yes there should be a, a time frame for decommissioning removal of the panels absolutely agree with that but if there's another issue that causes the stoppage 
of electricity flowing into the grid, there, then that is not of concern to the, to the county. That's between the, the solar developer and BG&E that's receiving the power. If everything else is being maintained, I don't see that as an issue. I mean, you could also be, it may not be the, the solar developer's problem with getting electricity out. It could be a BG&E problem with something in their system right. yeah. not taking the electric from that field. Right. So yeah, they would have to shut it down until they repair that. Right, I'm sure that would be rapid though. Yeah. It's not like a part that they'd be waiting for. <laughs> so I've always thought the, the time frame for decommissioning once production stops was primarily a protection for the property owner, yes. right? In that in the, the solar company that I've been working with all of a sudden disappeared and they're not maintaining things and so on. I need that decommissioning process to begin and, and get the county involved with, hey, we're gonna start looking at claiming the bond and so on. Right. So I thought that was the primary reason for it. I agree. Um, and if you're saying that you think that Four months is too short, that should be six months. But again, because it's a protection of the property owner, mm -hmm. uh, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, but from a compliance perspective, thing like that, we do we often look at absolute deadlines like that, where if it says it's four months, power stop, it's got to start? Or would yeah, it there could be all kinds of reasons for something. It's looked at on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. It could be a major uh, transformer problem that needs to be replaced that might have take some time to get there. Mm -hmm. Like say, say it's a, a, a grid problem, not so much a site problem mm -hmm. that they can't receive it or something. It's, I mean, yeah. you look at it at a case by case basis yeah. to determine yeah, if right. something mm -hmm. is reasonable. If it's a reasonable reason, yes, yeah. okay, you will give you yeah. some more time. Yeah. If it's not, well, sorry, mm -hmm. you're out of time. Right. Yeah. Can I just put a condition like that on it, say a, a maximum of four months. If it's been abandoned, you need to decide what you're going to do with it, whether you're going to decommission it or whether you're going to fix it, but up to that four months, and then put a little clause in there that says extreme conditions. The, you know, you don't have to say what they are, mm -hmm. but it would be the, the county's responsibility to call those as yeah. extreme conditions, not the energy person because they didn't order the car right. so it's going to go on and on right, right. Um, so I, I'm just saying I think I agree with you in terms of there needs to be some kind of that time frame mm -hmm. for to get us to that decommissioned time yep. whenever we decide that's going to be yeah. Yeah. because otherwise you just keep putting it on. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right I, well, I, I think that the, I'm with Chris I think who we have to protect here is the real estate Mm -hmm. And that's the real estate owner. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of neutral whether it's producing electric or not. If everything else on it's maintained perfectly, mm -hmm. I don't care. Uh, and that's yeah. a terrible thing. Uh, just don't need. But I think we have to have some mechanism to put the landowner back in the hot seat. Have a sort of balance of it. It snows every day and they can't get work done. Mm -hmm. You have to give a little, mm -hmm. you know, little bit of, yeah. a little bit of wiggle. Well, well, perhaps this is what you're public. really asking is that the landowner notify the county, the mm -hmm. appropriate agency within the county, when they receive notice mm -hmm. from the solar developer that the project is going to be decommissioned. Mm -hmm. One thing, well, and this is not necessarily the landowner, but whoever is actually operating the site, mm -hmm. who they have to notify, they have to, we should put in there that yes, they need, if it's going to stop producing. And you can say for whatever reason, for maintenance or whatever, you have to notify the landowner who has to notify the county. We need to make sure we put something in there because if you as a landowner, you're not going to know when that stops producing. No one's going to know. No one's going to know unless they actually notify right. us. Right. I'm sorry. So from what you just said, though, with any sort of maintenance, I mean, what are we going to do with that information? If, they, well, if, they they don't want to, if, if it's a maintenance issue, let's say, but why Today they shut down for maintenance. Yeah. yeah, and it's going to be offline for 30 days. Mm -hmm. uh, come to find out, it's going to be even longer than that to go into that. Well, what's happening, and why is it? But if there's no reasonable explanation, and there's nothing really mm -hmm. preventing them from fixing it, you're just letting it sit. Well, then you take it from when they first notified you. 
why do you need to know if it's down for maintenance for 30 well days? i'm not saying it. i'm just saying that they have to, that they have to notify the property owner and if you know which i think that's reasonable yeah, by the we have to put that in there property property owner 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 owner. Owner. you can't count on them you have to say if it's going to be down the property owner needs to be notified which I think I, actually the relationship between the property owner and the yeah, yeah, I, 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 I need to review. Involved in that. Yeah, I don't know. If, I, I believe there's no kitchen requirements in the contract. Is there? But okay. I, I, I'd have to go back and look for specific requirements, but I do believe there are not. I know there's so no kitchen to make sure that be decommissioned. There's something in there that says that the operator, when he's shut it down for whatever reason, mm -hmm. Has to notify somebody that he shut it down, mm -hmm. and that puts the onus on the landowner that if it's going to be, they're going to yeah. shut it down for a while. Okay, fine, but then it's going to be on the onus on the landowner. If it's longer than the four months or longer than the six months, then it's going to be the landowner that's going to have to notify the county at that point. There are two questions: Does the county care relationship with the state <laughs> if they're not producing enough alternative energy? Okay. The second question would be. Uh, once decommissioned, what happens to the zoning of, of this property? The zoning never changes. Okay, so if they could build back, they could put another solar array back there yes. five years later, mm -hmm. even if we tighten things down. Not the grandfathers? No, so the way the current code is written is on that 20 acres uh, or less that, that, uh, that the solar facility is on, that once decommissioned, that that 20 acres or less is back to the way it was prior to, to uh -huh. the solar came in. So it can be used for ag, uh, ag production. It can be developed in any number of the, the uses that are allowed in ag. Uh, it's basically back to normal. Yeah, that idea, but could someone rebuild the solar array back on? Yes. If they yeah. resubmit? Yeah, it would, they would have to start the process. Yeah. Okay, okay. it has to start the process. Yeah. I have a question to that point though. Mm -hmm. They keep everything the same and they say they install it three years from now and then two years after that solar panels are better, right? For whatever reason. And they mm -hmm. come in and they want to redo the panels. They don't want to remove the post, they don't want to change the landscaping, they're not changing the access, they're not doing anything, they just want to remove the panels. Is that just maintenance? That's just maintenance in my mind. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they would need a new site plan. Nothing about the site has changed. They're not disturbing more, they're not trying to right. make the site bigger, yep. smaller, all so, they're doing is maintenance. So theoretically, they could extend the lease 20 years from now mm -hmm. and replace the panel tops and yep. just keep going. Yeah. But they don't do any bonding with that. They don't. No, Every five that. years, we would be evaluating the bonding to make sure that's still appropriate to what's on the site. Yeah. So back to my, yeah. I keep driving. So you have a, a property that's no longer producing. I don't know if it's decommissioned yet or not. Mm -hmm. But we all think it's done. Mm -hmm. Does that still does that property still count in our total acreage that we're going to allow? I guess not once it goes back to if, if it goes, if it goes to, it, that's what I'm saying. If your grandfather's in, then you say we're going to have no more one percent of our properties in solar arrays. Well, and you got so, half of them sitting empty. How do they count? Well, if they're if, decommissioned and they're yeah, removed, once it's then it's going to be taken out of that count. Yeah. It's because it could be put back as agriculture, but then if they come back again and you know, say mm -hmm. another company wants to do something there, right. solar, then that would get thrown back into yeah, They may not <laughs> totally grandfather in as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I got you. That's what you're saying. So I think the, the date in my mind that's more important than if it's if it's not functioning and, and decommissioning has to start is how much time do we want to allow the allow them to go through the decommissioning process. So once the, so we give a hypothetical example. Let's say we've talked about four months and we can we can revise that but well, four so, months is when it's triggered. Right. So we four months talked about right, so it's right. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's that it's triggered. And so there's a date that by which the um, solar developer needs to start the decommissioning process. So then and they agree that they're going to decommission it. And so they start. How long do we give them to complete the decommissioning? Is that something that we've done? The, yeah, the stand, standard's 12 months. 12 months. That. Um, 
for the yeah for the actual decommissioning removal restoration process um and on in the the four months that kind of like you know period where it's like wait, wait what's going on here um that's that's very short i think my understanding from developers is that typically is more like 18 months uh but if it is going to be a very short four or six month whatever period um there there needs to be kind of an allowable cure time, auto extension. There needs to be like a lot of flexibility there. And I know you all were sort of talking about that, that if it, what if it's the utility that's causing the problem or what, you know, there's different issues that are out of uh, control of the landowner or the developer. Um, so you just got to be prepared for having flexibility there. And also I think just be careful about how much kind of burden you want to put on the county to be kind of overly monitoring um, something uh, that uh, really is, a little bit of kind of a red herring issue, um, I think, in the industry. But in general, the, the decommissioning kind of actual process of getting the panels out of the ground, restoring the land, um, that's a 12-month uh, period. That's that's the standard. Good. Anybody have any comments on that? Any issues with 12 months? I've seen um, in some of the other code where an independent professional engineer <clears throat> at the solar company's expense prepares a net cost estimate of decommissioning and restoration of the site. And that's something that goes into the plan. So, you know, maybe that's who needs to determine an independent person separate from the solar company, how long it should take to decommission mm -hmm. the site, what is appropriate given the parameters mm -hmm. because everyone is different right right so how can we just say it's going to take 12 months i mean <clears throat> they're all going to be installed differently different companies and that sort of thing so is that something that's reasonable um it's something we can certainly um think about the, the issue with uh, any sort of construction project is that there's there's a high variability in how long something can take because you have weather constraints and and other types of constraints. Right. So um, an engineer could look at at a plan and say, man, this you could do this work and if all the stars aligned, you could get it done in a month. But then you get hit with terrible weather and all of a sudden that one month turns into three months or six months. So we're talking about putting something in code. So really, it should be more um, relaxed uh, as far as the amount of time um, than, than uh, restrictive. Uh, so, I mean, if we think that 12 months is, is way too long, then then we can certainly note that. But, but how are we industry, coming up with the 12 months? That, Charlie, right. how do you come up with the 12 months? How does your industry... Do that's, uh, that's just, a, I think it's just a standard that's used in contract that's like viewed as reasonable. But someone came up with that 12 months somehow. Do you know how that happened? Like, did someone? I, I don't know. I don't know the, the impetus of it, but I think it probably takes into account the construction that's involved and the removal of all that material and then moving land around a little bit more if you need to, replanting, uh, you know, whatever seed is needed. Um, so I think it's trying to take into account, you know, all of that. Um, but, you know, this is not, this, this, solar, this isn't a new industry. This, this has been happening for, decades especially the past decade um so it's not like we're paving new ground here in carroll county with it so these are kind of like tried and true standards um you know from contracts that have been in place for a long time that came out of to take it out of the responsibility of the landowner decision mm -hmm. or even the energy sure. company's decision. Yeah. And um, it's just another step in the process mm -hmm. if we want to make that. Yeah, other um, people. You know, somebody it. else who has no ownership responsibility of right. either right. Um, comes in and says, yes, it's time, get going, do the commissioning. I see um, a way to say it has to be done by the 12 months. So mm -hmm. completely finished all right. restoration, right. which yeah. is what the industry wants to do. Yeah. So then, you know, this third party person can say, wow, this is a huge site. There's no way they're going to get it all done by 12 months, which would be the the odd 
the odd man out. So um, I think we should say not to exceed. And then there is a penalty if we want to do that. If you exceed the 12 months and it keeps going on into 18 months mm -hmm. and two years, and they don't want to do that because they're paying her, her lease on the property every time it's not working, as soon as it stops working. So, you know, it behooves them to want to get it done. I, I assume it's that's possible. Zoning and the landowner will have the ability to say it makes sense to give more time, right? Somewhere we put that wiggle language in there because. Yeah, the, the, the issue is when do we cash in the bond? When do we bet on the right, bond? Right. And when can a landowner bet right. on back on their property? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you need a little bit of time here. But the issue is the bond, I think. When do you cash it? So we could write language that said not in excess of 12 months. Puts a, that puts right. With a no time formal break. agreement yeah. or something like that. And there's always extreme instances. If there was, a uh, Michael said, with no formal agreement, it would have to be county, and just between landowner. And, so does that give you a problem at the county level? I mean, I think I say any. If you set a time limit, if it gets to the end and if there's an issue during the time limit, you know, yeah, it doesn't be good to grant maybe an extension a little bit more time to get stuff done. Yeah, but like I said, that's on a case by case basis. So. You set a hard deadline, say 12 months, it's got to be completed by 12 months. But if it's not, well, why is it? Is it, is it because you just messed around and didn't do it? Well, then you can yank the bond after that 12 months. Mm -hmm. But if it's for a very legitimate reason, then you get them, you know, an extra month or so to, to get it done. That, that really, once you set that deadline, really becomes a judgment call. I would think from my standpoint, or whoever takes my place standpoint to do that. Yeah. But it doesn't put you in all response of being accused of favoritism or anything like that. I get accused of that every day. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, I agree with that last comment, just that it's it's all it's good to have some flexibility, but then but the, the fallback is all is 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 the bond that is Specific to decommissioning, the county can always resort to that if it feels like the developer's not um, following through. That's what it's there for. If he's not doing his job, you yank it. But if he's doing it, then mm -hmm. give him the time to do it. So 12 months, unless an extension is granted, something like that. Right. The language, which is pretty standard language. Which is standard right? language, anyway. Yes. Yeah. Did you have a did you have a duration in mind related to when decommissioning needed to start? We had in terms of what triggers it? Yeah. So we had we had 180 days in the original mm -hmm. code. We talked last week meeting, we talked about four months. Right. I think 180 days is reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Um what other topics related to decommissioning did we want to discuss? Well, you want to talk about the disposal of pendants? <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got that on the list. So, okay. what are your thoughts on that? Well, number one, um, if you're going to dispose of them, you have two options. You want to recycle the panels, mm -hmm. which is not recommended um, because most recycle places can't handle the number one. Do you have one in Carroll County that can handle caustic waste materials and recycle them? Do you even have a landfill that can hold all the solar panels? They're having real problems out in California right now with all their wind, their wind uh, devices um, that they cannot, they cannot find up enough landfill to bury them, and there is no way to recycle them effectively. That's the that's what I've heard, and that's what I've read. Um, so in terms of recycle, I think that's kind of out because there is something that required them to be reused and or mm -hmm. recycled. I think that's probably not somewhere you want to go. Okay. Unless you already have, do you have a recycle center that can do uh, maybe toxic sorry. metals, toxic, you know, panels, yeah. presumed or not presumed to be toxic? Yeah. Isn't that more of a state mm -hmm. requirement than a county requirement? 
again, I'm thinking of gas stations. So if there's, you know, tanks underground, there's there's the state agency that mm -hmm. looks at that, and the county doesn't. So maybe it's at the state level that that, look, that that decision is made. There's nothing in the state plan that talks about decommissioning at all. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe so. I don't believe so right. either. So somebody has to talk about it. So what are you going to do? Yeah, ship everything to the state? Well, maybe it happening sooner. <laughs> well, so the question <laughs> is, what is appropriate to be in county code? Because we don't know what's going to, we don't know what technology what's going to be going on in 20 years from now when these particular projects are going to need to be deconventioned. So that's why I'm of the opinion that we don't put anything in the county code regarding how they get decommissioned because technology changes. And if, okay. we, if we set limitations, if we say, it needs to be recycled, but there's no capability for recycling, then we've, we've created an impossibility, right? So I think my well, opinion would be- Well, it could be in the decommissioning plan, and if it's reevaluated every five years, you could add things closer to that time. Well, so the decommissioning plan, my what I would envision, I haven't looked at one, is that it talks to what is the restoration that needs to happen on the property. It does not speak to where are you going to take these panels, what are you going to do with them, and so on. Whoever is doing the decommissioning is going to have to follow current federal and state requirements, whether it's for a certain percentage of recycling or how it gets disposed. But that's for them to figure out, and they will have to figure it out when based on current. It's state going to and be in their county. I, mean, I don't think it's for them to figure out. Um, and that's something that was in Commissioner Spigliotti's mm -hmm. uh, points okay. that we need to look at because, you know, the time's going to come and where are these pillar panels going to go, right. recycled or not? We have no idea what We have no going idea. To, so, 10 to 20 years, what's, what's going to, how, how much landfill capacity, what kind of recycling technology is it going to be? It's an issue. It's so, an right. issue everywhere. Right. But so we can't establish code today that hamstrings us. 20 years from now when the technology changes. Well, isn't that but, what the decommissioning plan is for? Is for us to be able to, a, a third party professional writes the decommissioning plan specific for that project and says, here's what we're doing. And I understand they might not get so granular as we're going to put them in a box and ship them to Ohio where they have a recycling plant or whatever. Right. They might not get to that point. But if it's of a concern at that point and we know that there are recycling centers available, we can investigate it at that time. So, when, when so the, design, the, the decommissioning plan should say that panels will be disposed of as per current Regulated, state and yeah. federal regulations. Right. But the county doesn't the county doesn't get involved in those types of environmental right. regulations. We don't have the expertise or the knowledge. Right. It's the current state and federal requirements that they would have to conform to. Right. I, and it would just be common sense that they whoever's doing this work has to conform to state and federal regulations at the time that they're performing the work. Well, maybe we're hearing who prepares the plan and, okay. you know, is that part of what they're preparing? I don't know. Charlie, what, what is what is prepared now for decommissioning plans in your industry? Where are these solar panels going? You said they've been around for decades, so some of them have been decommissioned. And then where do they go? I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> I, I missed that, and I saw everybody staring at me. Um, I'm sorry, I'm at the airport, so I'm a little bit distracted. But um, what was the question? The question is: the solar uh, industry has been around, and there are solar fields that have been around for decades, as you said earlier. So those some have been decommissioned, correct? Yeah, I mean, probably most of it has been installed in the past ten years. So. It's uh, probably hasn't been decommissioned yet. Um, that we're still probably another decade or two away before there's going to be like a wave of like what happens with all this. Where is it going to be recycled, reused, whatever? Um, so I agree with the kind of general premise that you want to be flexible there. Um, I mean, you could say if if available, then this should happen. Um, but you don't want to prescribe something that's going to happen in 25 years when we don't know. Um, but that that is. Like in Europe, that's a uh, they're more advanced. I'd say more ahead. I think of the, the U.S. and Europe and requiring what kind of recycling uh, sort of industry segment is available for uh, the future. But um, I think that's a that's a growing area in the U.S. So 
My question is, what, what what is the plan? Where are these solar panels going when they're decommissioned? Uh, they're either going to they're going to be recycled, re reused. I don't know yet. I mean, I, that's they all they're not all going to go to one place. So, so in your, I'm sorry, no, I can really change the question a little bit. So, um, in your experience, looking at decommissioning plans, do decommissioning plans get into the specificity as to how those panels are disposed? Of? No. Okay. No, I, no, I asked the developer about that, and they said no. Um, that's not typically included uh, in a decommissioning plan. Is kind of what are you doing next with those panels? I mean, they're not going to be dumped in, in Carroll County, so it's not going to be your problem. It's going to be the developer's problem. So that being said, would it make sense just to say they must be removed from a property? Yes. And yeah. then let it go from Exactly. Yeah, that's, what, that's what the decommissioning plan should say. It's, it's what the plan should indicate what's happening to that property. And so all the panels should be removed, all the infrastructure, any undergrounds of yeah. uh, lines that should be taken out. Top cell should be put back. Not doing some back 40 acre deal. Yeah, exactly. right. all for the I mean, but it, it needs to be all right. It, everything needs to be removed from the property. And then you can name the state. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then the developer has to address where it goes from there. So we're all saying that we don't care where it goes in 20 years. We don't know where it goes. We don't and know. We don't know. What we're also saying is that Charles County doesn't have the authority. Right? That's. What would your recommendation be for code I don't know. I, I don't know because, but I just think it's a concern that, that we just can't ignore. I think so, that everyone's just ignoring it. These panels are going to be everywhere. So um, where do them go? I don't. Yeah. At the end of their life, right? Yeah, that's an issue. Right? There are our and our problems. landfill. I'm sure, like our landfill has regulations. Yeah, I can I can say you know conf confidently that this isn't something that's just being ignored. This is kind of a whole uh this is gonna be a market, you know, it's coming, like this is an, a market opportunity for capitalism to kind of figure out the best way to take advantage of it. Um, so I, I, there's definitely, you know, state legislation out there, I believe, um, probably federal legislation out there that talks about this, has kind of goals for it. It's not really like a county level issue, um, but it's, you know, it, it's definitely, I agree, it's a, it's a bigger question, wind panels, solar panels, what, wind turbines, whatever, um, kind of what, how are those going to be taken care of in the decades in the future? Because obviously there's going to be a ton of it. Um, I'm an environmentalist, like I want that to be handled the right way. Um, but I, I do, you know, we can, we could have a separate conversation about that and bring in experts or whatever on it. But I'm, I know for a fact that this is, it's not an area that's being ignored. It's in the, at solar conferences, they talk about it. Um, but yeah, that's a kind of a next phase thing that's really outside of the, the scope for this, this meeting that we're, doing here in Carroll County. If you want to just talk about like the land in Carroll County, potentially you could do soil testing if it's such a concern that there's toxins in the panels, but thinking about what happens to those panels in 30 years when they leave Carroll County is, you know, sort of outside of your responsibility. So I think we all recognize that it's a concern, that people are concerned about it, but it just, it really isn't in the, the responsibility of Carroll County local code to address that. It's, it, that's uh, okay. federal EPA and, okay. and state.
but if we put, or, but if you have a suggestion for for language that you'd like us to consider, please let us know. But I I, don't, I can't think of anything that would be I don't write balls. I don't but, have language. Yeah. <laughs> in there, I just know it's a yeah. concern, and I, I thought if there was an opportunity for us to address it. And we could, but um, and again, it was in Commissioner Migliotti's mm -hmm. points, you know, as something that we should discuss and mm -hmm. try to plan for um, within our county. Yeah. So it is a concern. Mm -hmm. Well, is it possible if we take something in Jay's language that says, as per the regulations, and put it upon the solar company to be accountable for that? So as so part of that, proper, yeah. part of the plan, where mm -hmm. do you take these? Where mm -hmm. are they going? What are you doing with them? And that could be part of their plan that we want a third party engineer to approve. Mm -hmm. Once they've gotten approval by some engineer, I mm -hmm. guess they can take their plan everywhere they want it to go. Yeah. But then I think that covers us as to say, and we acknowledge that they're an mm -hmm. issue and we're gonna treat yeah. it seriously. Yeah, see so the problem with writing something like that into the plan that it has to get approved so you're talking about something that's going to happen in 2025 years and, mm. and or potentially right so maybe five years from now somebody opens up a solar panel recycling plant in carroll county it's possible it's possible it's not likely but it's possible, it's possible. in which case then their plan that said that if you put a specificity on the plan that requires them to ship them to ohio or to ship them to china or whatever all of a sudden the specificity of that plan doesn't doesn't apply. So that's why you don't regulate something like that with local code. You basically say, and you don't even have to say it because they're required to follow RECRA um, federal EPA requirements, and they're required to follow anything that the state comes up because those that level of government is looking at those types of concerns. It's really typically not something that local government addresses. Well, I would hold the energy company responsible for putting it in writing that they will do proper disposal. Okay. And they're, they're required as by part law. of the decommissioning. And they're required they're, by law. They're required by state and federal law. Not much yep. well, yeah. As long as it's written, it's removed from the property. Yes. That we can use our bond money to do that instead of saying, I don't get tangled up on when mm -hmm. the bond kicks in and when mm -hmm. it doesn't. Yeah, they can do everything else perfectly. Yeah. But then have a stack of panels right in the back. And that is absolutely not so As long as we can use the bond money right. for it. Yeah. So if the solar company fails to decommission properly and mm -hmm. the county bond kicks in to yes. remove it, then yep. how would the county dispose of it? We would follow state and federal, federal laws and state 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 state. Chris, I have a question <laughs> along that line of way. If solar company A is sold to solar company B, solar company B is sold to solar company C, who's informed of this chain of events? Who gets informed of that? The, the property owner and then and then who That's well the, the plan device. is still in place on the, the site it's not specific to, to the company. company do you sign that plan the decommissioning plan yeah does the landowner sign that i don't yeah, believe so does. um we haven't don't know. Have we haven't developed one where we, we, we figured out signature blocks and so on i mean but but everything that we do relates to the property and the current property owners. Yes. So if a solar company gets sold 23 times, it really doesn't matter. Our interaction is always going to be with the property owner. And so the property owner should have the relationship with the current solar company and so on. Um, and if we, if, if, if the property owner does not address the decommissioning, then the bond money is there. We're going to tell the property owner we're coming yeah. on your property. We're doing the, yeah. we're going to decommission yeah. using this money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. And it's one of the yeah, right. Everything goes back to the property owner. Doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Yeah. Property owner is responsible for it. Period. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of those. Be careful what you purchase too, right? Mm -hmm. Is we've had sites. We've got examples where um, twenty years ago something was built. And it's now in non-compliance. Property ownership has changed twice. We're not going back to who did it 20 years ago. We, the only thing we can do is go to the current property owner, right? and it's terrible for them because they didn't realize that something was done wrong 20 years ago. But they're the property owner. They're they're the one we have to work with. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, that's no, a good question. And it works that way with all kinds of contaminants, like oh, yeah. Superfund sites. Mm -hmm. Like like Black and Decker, mm 
Mm -hmm. And there was mm -hmm. contamination there. And that was there when the new property was set up, but they were responsible because now they own it, even though they didn't. What else would you like to talk about decommissioning? Oh, well, I think um, when they take it out, they have to restore every, they have to take everything out. They have mm -hmm. to dig the post out, they yep. have to do all that. Yep. They have to repair all the gravel, the fences, the access roads, mm -hmm. all of that stuff is part of the processing. Yes. Um, unless the landowner wants some of it or something, yes. or does not want the land to be restored mm -hmm. to its original. Like maybe she wants the road kept up. I mean, yep. I don't know. But that that may be a clause that you'd have to yes. think about. I think um, makes perfect sense. But the question of restored to its original condition is mm -hmm. kind of a concern of the, the farmers because what happens with those four foot, five foot, however deep the holes for this the struts are mm -hmm. and passable concrete that can be poured. Do they use concrete? Do they use concrete? Some do. Okay. So that, of course, would yep. be removed, and then you have to fill that up with soil from mm -hmm. what the top soil mm -hmm. that maybe is still there. No, it has to be all contained within the solar field, correct? You don't want to go outside of the solar field to land that has not been damaged conceivably, right? Yeah. So, I think that's a point if you yeah. want to mm -hmm. use one question. Are we also talking about any screening? Plant screening. I had a question about that too. To be removed, but yeah. if it's in the middle of a farm field and they put the screening around it, mm -hmm. that's why they, they want to restore it to farmland. Are you going to have to re remove all that and plantings? Also, or you them to if, put, if the landowner, if yeah. the landowner okay. agrees, that's it, yeah. and nobody else cares, mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah. you know, it's not trees are not an eyesore. Um, so then the landowner takes over mm -hmm. the keeping of the trees in, yeah. if that's what the landowner Well, I think that's the question, is that by saying restore to the original condition is implying that oh. those trees would be cut down. Mm -hmm. So the view that you have now of trees and shrubs and plants and all that would be gone as soon as the panels are removed. That's kind of the, the question. Well, yeah. Soils. We would say soils. Well, because there might be other things that need to be removed also. It's just that... That's all physical things that are can, that are easily removed. Mm -hmm. you, know, you plant a whole bunch of trees, and you plant a thousand trees, and you've got this nice, you know, semi thirty-year-old kind yeah. of little yeah. shrub oh, trees. Do you want to remove them, or do you want? Yeah, you know, leave that early up to the property. Right. 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 I mean, yeah. really, the purpose of, of this clause is to protect the property owner, right? So the solar company is gone; they, they've done their thing. We want to make sure that the property owner is satisfied with what's left. If the property owner says, I want all that landscaping to stay and I want the access road to stay in, okay, that's that would be acceptable to the property owner and acceptable to the county. The we the county don't care yeah, what it's right. restored back to. It's really this is really to protect what the property. What about owner. the soil? Um, Charlie mentioned testing the soil, and mm -hmm. I had talked about that mm -hmm. last week, testing before and after. Mm -hmm. And if they are moving dirt, which they will be. Because there are swales that are built in for the mm -hmm. flow of water and that sort of thing, no matter how much they said they're not disturbing it, they will be disturbing it mm -hmm. um, and possibly concrete footers for the panel pole um, mm -hmm. posts. Um, you know, that's going to disturb the soil. I mean, I'm not a soil expert, but I would think restoring it to the original condition would um, also include testing the soil prior to installation and upon decommissioning. So the completion. I, I don't disagree, um, and we can certainly put it in. But I'm just curious: testing the soil for what? To go back to the original condition. Okay. So whatever classification the soil was in the beginning, and maybe the. Okay. It, it probably, that probably wouldn't change. That's why I'm pretty adamant that it can't be anything better than class three soils. But if it's already class three. I mean, it's the local don't want to do with them, whether they turn into the tree open space or run it out the farm ground. As long as we don't have a big footprint, I, I, I don't know that economics wouldn't drive to do whatever's best. Okay. Couldn't you have a test for like minerals or some kind of whatever the, the content of the soil is when they decide to start the project and then test it after the project to see that the Soil is but, the same. Yes, but do you, do you realize that if, that on a 20-acre field you could have class one, two, and yes. three soils. 
So if you're running around just trying to find class three soils, you can have five acres there, four acres there, six acres there. It ain't gonna work. Well, I'm talking about yeah, that's one of my issues that we need well, to bring up. Is that exclusive class three or not? Well, I thought we decided not to address it all. Yeah, because well, it's not with the class well, three soils. Well, that's what he's saying is reality. You got it. Pockets looked at the soil. That's why I'm thinking class three. Well, I think that one of the things Chris was getting at is with, when you do a soil testing, you have to know what specific constituents are you testing for. So, like you mentioned, minerals, but like, what is it that has to do with the solar panels that you want to see if it's there before you start, mm -hmm. and then make sure it's not there after? Like, you would have to know the specific. Does That's disturbing the land and digging up concrete or anything like that change the uh, constituents of? Well, oh, sure. I mean, any time you disturb soil, you, you, you disturb the constituency of the soil, the com composition of the mm -hmm. soil. Because up here could be really good soil, and down here could be pretty rough clay. Uh -huh. It's clay that's not farmable. So, so that is a hard lift. But if we're asking them to restore it to its original condition, I mm -hmm. believe that's part of it. I believe so. Okay. And, and, and yeah. what you're saying, just are you trying to understand what we're testing for? And you're looking for all of those probable PFAS that, that might be leached, or you're looking for silicon, or you're looking for right. cadmium, mm -hmm. or yeah. lead, or whatever that stuff is that they put in there. Mm -hmm. And I thought we were going to get to that later when we talk yeah, about well, it. Yeah, but that would be who you look, what you're looking at. Okay. Or um, these, these, everything can't be aluminum. There's lead yeah. in there. Is okay. it lead that's leaching yeah. out? Yeah. Um, all of those. Yeah, and if they were there before, fine. They're part of the soil. It's whatever it is. Um, but if they're there after, but they weren't there before, then maybe that's not the original condition. So right. The PFAS. Chemicals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe your maybe your language would be no toxic residue. Toxic residue. Like, so I, I go broad else. Define what it is. No well, toxic. Okay. The, the the problem is with and okay, there's a lot to unpack. There. <laughs> so for instance, uh, you mentioned PFOS. Um, one source of PFOS is is, is wastewater treatment sludge. That farmers put on their that some farmers put on their fields. So, say hypothetically, you've got an agrivoltaic solar field, and the farmer applies treatment uh, wastewater treatment sludge and contaminates the ground with PFAS. Whose responsibility is it then to address that? I guess it's not the landowner, because that's the same as the farmer, because the landowner. The, uh, we this was addressed at the Farm Bureau. Uh, Kevin, coffee with Kevin, the new ag secretary. Yeah, yeah. His answer about PFOS was this there's no test that's capable of addressing PFOS right now. And you can take mm -hmm. five tests and have five different answers mm -hmm. on that. It is it's it's an issue that cannot be resolved right yeah. now. Now, 20 years from now, mm -hmm. decommissioning maybe it could be. Yeah. But right now, mm -hmm. it cannot be addressed as far as a test. There's no accurate test at all. Yeah. This is from the excerpt. There's many other examples. There's many other examples. There's many other You've got to be committed to talk twice. You have to have different grades. We have plain DC. Can't be done. Right. West Coast, Carroll County, probably. Mm -hmm. And they, what they do is they do tests for heavy metals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stuff that you right. need off the ground is the issue. But right. I think it's just keep it to you know, toxic. Yeah, I like, I like that. I'm not devastated. Yeah. Okay, but I'm, I'm trying to call constituents though, and and again, what it. How do you know it's from the soil? Yeah, how do you know it's from oh, the You tested the soil before, and so you come up with yeah. with these chemicals. Yeah. Then are are we then taking action against the property owner and say, well, if you wanted to do solar, but we found these materials. You now have to clean up your your property. Forget about solar. You just have to. I mean, where? What are the ramifications of these tests? So there is one one county that um, a developer pointed me to where this has come up in Delaware, um, and we might be able to 
use that language. I think that, that this was something developers are comfortable with and the, the county was as well. Um, it's a little bit high level, but it basically do a baseline sample and then you try to follow sort of EPA method for inter testing inorganic compounds. Um, you do it every five years. If the test results after the first five years are look good, then you could make it a, a 10 year kind of testing cycle. But um, I can send the, the language to Brenda and she could share it with everybody else. Um, because this is that's that's the only example that I'm aware of uh, at all where the county gone you know done that, but um, I think that that was something that was agreed to by by everyone yeah. that seemed reasonable. I didn't bring my computer with me, today, but I have seen some in the mail and from other counties also did that similar wording. Yeah, if you can send it, send it to the little, little county because okay. last last week um, Garrett and Harvard County were mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I checked both of their codes and I couldn't find anything either one of those. Um, about, you, about, about the water quality testing. And um, I sent an email this morning to um, to the county in North Carolina um, that we've been looking at their code to, just to ask them, like, have they had any project come through, any lessons learned, um, if they could provide some feedback. Mm -hmm. And some of their code references that groundwater testing has to be per state, uh, North Carolina state requirements. And I looked through the North Carolina code and I couldn't find anything. So I was asking for, like, what are, can they give, get, give more specifics so we can understand out. it? Yeah, you yeah. can just keep going and going yep. and trying to find it. Yeah, so I, I reached out to them. So no issue whatsoever in, in mentioning it as one of the topics that we've discussed and so on. Um, the actual implementation could be very difficult. Um, again, it's not something that typically local, um, government addresses. This is typically something that the EPA determines that there's an issue like PFAS. They, they pass um, requirements through um, RECRA and CERCLA and so on, and then those go to the state to, to enforce. And it's typically not a local county issue that tries to be addressed. But um, we can certainly make a recommendation and from this group uh, that it was an opinion expressed and, and then it's up to the commissioners to decide. So yes. absolutely hear what you're saying. Yes. And yes. and um, I guess the other thing that I would submit is that if the commissioners want to go that route, we probably need to hire consultants and so on to because we do not have the technical expertise to write mm -hmm. these types of water quality requirements for that could be enforceable at the local level. So well, since we're talking yeah. water quality requirements and things, and last week I mentioned, you know, about contamination of the water. So yeah. I did in my one day that I had available yesterday, <laughs> I spent some time and I do have several articles that I'll provide to Please. you if you wanted to make copies and distribute them. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to highlight um it would probably be easiest if you could email them to us, and then okay. we get, we'll, we'll share them with, with everybody. Okay, that right. comes yeah. from the EPA, which yeah. says some solar panels are hazardous waste, and talks mm -hmm. about you know the hazardous and, and mm -hmm. toxicities um, in the in the panel. So I mean, yeah. I just don't think it's something we can ignore. I mean, we're here to talk about all this. Mm -hmm. We're all responsible for our environment. And you know we just can't glaze over it and just say it, it's a, it's a state problem, it's a federal problem, it's this problem. I think we're here talking about and taking mm -hmm. responsibility for this right now. Uh, I, I don't think it's fair to just pass the buck to someone mm -hmm. else. And instead of passing the buck, I highly see that as like they are helping us. Right, they are helping us at a higher level by regulating it. So we're not passing it to them; we're relying on them to do a good job for everybody. Right? Yeah, a lot of trust in it. <laughs> yeah, I don't do. You know, the study was not just like how would it make a voting determination, or a stormwater management determination? We're letting them make their determination because we're not, like Chris is saying, we don't even have staff capable of making any of these considerations. So we allow somebody who's professional, that's what they've already done, to consider that. Since we're talking mostly about um, panel mm -hmm. waste, not so much the, the struts and all that other kind of waste, why can't we make it a recommend, well, a requirement that we get, as you had said, the um, material data sheet mm -hmm. from the energy company that's going to be contracted to do it 
where do your panels come from, mm -hmm. what's in them, give us that material, and then you can say at that point, there are things in there that we have knowledge of that are not right or something. But requ that requirement could be standard. Could it not? A standard so for the panel. A standard for the panel. What panels are you going to use? Where and, are they coming from? And where are they yeah. coming from? Uh, Charlie, is that typical? Having the having uh, kind of a disclaimer up front saying what sort of uh, toxins or whatever are in the in the panels. Yes. Uh, not that I'm aware of. There's got to be some type of material data. Yeah, there has to be. Yes, I'm sure it is. But my question is, what would we do with that information? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm looking yeah. at us, yeah, but like I said, but, but the fire companies get that. Right, right, right. They're their records, so they right. know what they're yeah. facing. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, that's that. we get that. Okay. so we get that. So somebody walks in right now and hands a material safety data sheet with all the chemicals that are in the that are in a solar panel. What would any of us do with that information? Send it to public safety. Send it to public safety? Fire department. Oh, and they would have some. They would have it on record, and they would know well, it's there, so they would know how to treat it. But, but there would be no... So they would they would know about it. So they know about it. They won't be but, doing any. But there's no yeah. restriction, prohibition, anything in the code that would, that would be driven from that. Right. But we would be aware of what are mm -hmm. what's in the panels and what potentially could be harmful. And as a landowner, yep. they want to say, I don't want to risk putting that into mm -hmm. my soil yeah. because when this you know when this solar facility is gone or the panels we, break, yeah, or whatever happens to the soil, yeah. yeah. I want to re. I want to use it for agriculture, and I want to be able to know that I can do that. Or somebody's going to have to pay for the restoration, and it shouldn't be the landowner that has to pay for that. It's interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting. Sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here because I, I don't know. I, I I don't know all the details that go into those contracts, but um, but I think there are at least there's standards for the manufacturing processes that occur with the panels. So it's not like the panels are being made in somebody's garage, like they have to get approved and certified, you know, before they actually get out into the market. Um, so I think that's probably, if you're going really up the supply chain, that's kind of where the uh, the safeguards should be occurring is where they sealed appropriately, is everything intact, um, as opposed to kind of a, a county review. Well, since we're talking about it, and I think he mentioned, no. I think Charlie mentioned something about showing up. Um, your your um, Chapterton, mm -hmm. I asked him the question, where are your panels um, manufactured? And he said, well, we haven't we haven't ordered them yet. They're yeah, not ready. We yet. haven't, you know. But he did say most solar panels that are being utilized are being manufactured in places like Taiwan, Cambodia, Canada, and South Korea, um, and that hopefully we'll get some manufacturing in the United States. I have an interesting article, and and don't say that this is fake news. But this came out of um, Fox News actually uh, on the 24th. And Biden, well, the, the current administration has a tariff on China. One of the one of the tariff items is solar panels because that's where they usually come from. So the tariff is being bypassed, and that's what the news was all about. So they're bypassing the the, um, the panels from China to Taiwan to Cambodia and Malaysia and Vietnam. That's what this news article said, and I can send it to you if you want. Avoid the um, to avoid the tariff. So you say, oh, well, where our, our panels come from North Korea. Well, they didn't, or South Korea. They didn't. They came from China via Cambodia or South Korea. So um, that has nothing to do with the caustic materials, but it just says you can't trust un unless you see that material data um, that says this is what's in them, and they are you know, they are materials that we would require. And I think as, as, you know, as residents nearby a solar field, we should know what toxic chemicals we're living near and so that we can make a decision. Do we want to stay there or do we want to go? So is what you're asking for, for this list of materials to be submitted and then another review point to happen? So if you're not pleased with what's on the list, the project would be stopped at that point. Is that what you're asking for? It'll be a great idea. Well, <laughs> well it's going to happen. It's going to happen at the site review. 
that's where I, I know your plans are before this, the, the, the technical review. So at that time that the initial site plan is reviewed, you say, okay, where's your minim minimum data sheet for all this, uh, all these panels? And where are, you, where are you likely to get them from, even though, you know, we're still that's never done. I'm, I'm just, I'm you want to wanna know what's in them. In them, okay, in them. In them is one thing, but where in they come from is another thing. So I'm just curious what they Well, it's where they come, from. it's, it's what's in them. Yes. Okay. All right. But right now, um, it's not in our country. If it is in our country, then you maybe say you trust the government and they're not going to put stuff in it that shouldn't okay. belong in it. However, I think that what you're looking for is what's in the panels and is it likely okay. there's always a likelihood yeah. that a panel breaks so, or something. At the very right. least, to Jay's point, I think it needs to be in the plan, you know, the plan that's submitted where the panel, not necessarily what, where they're coming from because we can't even track that, right? Apparently, yeah, but, right. Um, but what, the, there needs to be a material data sheet. Oh, one thing that, um, once we look, Everything goes to the site plan review process and approved by the planning commission. Those developers have to get a building permit. They have to submit a lot of that information to the permits department and then the review at that point. Um, and that's the um, building materials, whether they qualify with the code, um, are they sustainable, whatever. That all happens in that building permit review process. So there is that type of review, not necessarily if you're in the site plan process. But the building permit process where they have to submit all the building material that they're using to them to make sure it meets the minimum building code. Right. And once it does meet that minimum building code, that's when they'll issue the permit to actually build. Right. Okay. So and the so building material safety data sheet submitted then? I don't I don't know if they are not. There might be with some material, I think there might be, but I don't know for sure. Because so what you what you're saying about how the, the at the very least the fire department needs to know what's mm -hmm. in those panels. So you know, is that going to be on record then through the building permit process or? Yeah, because they'll what the generally when something's like that is submitted, it, it'll it'll state that it meets the um, National Fire Protection Association code number two three dash four. It complies with that code, and that's what they're stating when they submit it that it complies with this code. Right, but so, it has the materials. Well, it, that's what it's. It doesn't necessarily have. Like, Materials and saying it apply, it complies with what the code requires. Yeah, I right? think it might be a little different than well, we're saying. Not a whole lot. So typically, this is just my understanding of it. I may be completely wrong, but building codes and so on don't typically ask for the materials that things are made out of. They require that they are certified by the appropriate federal agency that regulates those. So maybe the underwriter's laboratory or something like that. Yeah. So so. But if I'm building a, a house and I need widget number three, you you get a widget number three that meets the UL requirements and can install it. You don't get all of the components where it came from and all that. You don't review that kind of things, those kinds of things. We're saying for safety though, we would like that to be a requirement. But who is going to review that though? So if I again, if I give you a list of all the chemicals that that are in that panel. Who do I give that to? Who reviews it and who approves it? There's there's nobody here that can do that. All we would do from the permits inspections at the local level is say that it's okay. I it should be on record for what purpose? For the purpose of the fire department and for the surrounding residents. So, but there are, there are, there are only so many chemicals and so on that then get approved by the underwriters laboratory that are used in those panels, and those would be industry standards that our fire departments and so on would know how to address those in case of fire. Can you put in your record that I would like to recommend? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to talk you out of it. We can move We're just having a discussion. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. Your, your recommendation is going to be put in here. Yes. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Can I go back to the landscaping that we talked about earlier? <laughs> the landscaping requirements uh, yeah, and decommissioning. OK, yeah, yeah. sure. They would be commissioned. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's say this is the solar farm, and we have a, a line of trees screening it all around. So when the solar farm is decommissioned, we still have this rectangle of trees. You're saying that it will be perfectly allowable for the property owner to move those trees, well, whether it's 30 or 40 I mean, years from now? It could be, yes. If what not, if, but... 
if there's nothing put in there saying that they have to stay, okay. then mm -hmm. the property owner could remove. Right. Because if you yeah. want that to go back to farmland, then you're going to have to Right. Okay. That's what I say. You don't want to sit, you know, you don't want to necessarily sit there and say, all the landscaping that you're going to install is going to stay. If you want to go back to productive farming, that might need to be removed. So, so I don't would, want to say it stays. Right. So I would like to recommend, based on that, that we do more screening at the property lines than up close to. Well, like, like I say, screening is, it might be necessary. To make the screening more effective, to be close to the panel, be because they, for some reason, or along the edge of the property right. where there's a hill where there's no high and no cover board. You know, it all depends on where it is at. It could be in the middle of the field. Right. It may not be. But I think it needs to be site specific. Right. So it's say, not you to say that the fencing, you know, there has to be fencing and then immediately landscaping. Yeah. I think that's something we might want to avoid 30, 40 years ago. From now to take out all those trees and just strip all those. Well, I'd say if oh, yeah. you know, screening is going to be placed best where it's going to do its okay. best job. So if it has to be along the property line on top of a hill that's going to screen something down in a small hill mm -hmm. valley, that's where it should go, yes. But if it's up on top of the hill a little bit, it might be more efficient for the screening to be placed closer to the panels, which might be in the middle of the field, which you want to go back to farming, you want to remove it. Right. So that brings up a good point because we're referring a lot to site specifics. And I have a question about, you know, would it be better to make these conditional use? And maybe you can explain or Jay can explain mm -hmm. the difference between, you know, as we go through all of these different parameters, are they something that would go in a conditional use type of permitting or um, could you please explain? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so um, typically there are um, uses in a zoning district are categorized either as principal permitted, conditional or not allowed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so principal permitted, that's easy. You can do it, right? not allowed you can't do it those are easy conditional all that means is that you can do it but we need to go before the board of zoning appeals and there are what is it jay eight or or ten criteria that they evaluate the plans the total against. of 11 things that they have to look at that are listed in the code that they mm -hmm. have to take into consideration when they make it so the things that we're discussing now would still be listed in the code for solar commercial solar installation. Yes. But it would still go before the board and they would make some determinations. So maybe that's what uh, we need to be looking at for these types of things since there are mm -hmm. so many site specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like I yeah. Think we about yeah. Conditional use. Yeah. That's one of the options that's yeah. absolutely yeah. in there. Okay. It's, it's something to um, for the, uh, might, it, it, but yeah. by the time we get to the end of this meeting, I mean, mm -hmm. that may be something that makes the most sense. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Please. Is there a precedent for zoning law that has been in place to be repealed in this way? What's that? The zoning laws change constantly. Right, but it, so it's it, 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 you can we remove we just remove. I'm going to use this as an example. We used to control how many dogs you could have on your property. We just removed that entirely from the code. So from a zoning standpoint, <laughs> you know we used to say you could have three dogs max, mm -hmm. but that was removed from the code and it has no effect in the code anymore. So yeah, there are things that are completely removed from the code. And done away with, and sometimes they're replaced, and sometimes they're not. And those decisions are based on what? The commissioners. They make that decision on what to take out of the code, what to put in the code. Okay. Any code language, any code language is not made by staff. The staff will make a presentation to the commissioners, but it's up to the commissioners to vote and adopt those laws. So, literally, it's up to them to write what they actually want. And once they adopt it, pass it, then that's what we enforce. Okay. And that is a multi-step. Very yeah. multi-step mm -hmm. process. It's not one meeting. Yes. Yeah. The way it works, you know, not just usually the commissioners will come to staff and say, hey, take a look at this. And 
um, just give us a report on it. And the commissioners would look at that report and say, okay, we want something done. Refer us to the planning zoning commission to get their comments and everything. Planning zoning commission makes their comments, yay or nay, and they have said no before. Um, then it goes back up to the commissioners. Public hearings are held, and then the commissioners vote on it. They have voted four things that the Planning and Zoning Commission has recommended. They have voted the opposite of things with the Planning and Zoning Commission. It's entirely up to the commissioners what goes in. We just make all kinds of recommendations saying, hey, this is what we think is going to be best. But it's up to them to make a final decision. And they can go completely against what staff says and say, hey, okay, this is what we want it to be. And that's what it becomes. And it's not always unanimous. No, it's usually. <laughs> Usually not. <you. laughs> and because, and, and the very few reasons, just like here, not everybody agrees with each other. So, very much so. But it's ever in this book, and this is a copy of who is written, basically written and approved and passed by the county commissioners. And the commissioners have the choice whether to send things to the planning commission or not. They're not obligated They're not to send yet. it to the planning commission. Except for zoning. Except for zoning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, it would go. Yes. 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 Y
So if you click on that, that'll get you the code, and then you just look up 150. Yeah, that'll take you to the whole code. That's the whole code. Yeah. Someone can send it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll okay. send it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else from a decommissioning perspective that we we'd like to discuss? Are we finished with the panels too? I'm sorry. The panels is under another section. Yeah, so I think we, we kind of we did, we did, did we talk enough about that? We talked about there will be a decommission. Yeah. Yeah. All those the next variations. thing she said, we are oh, already finished gotcha. talking I mean, about that. We already yeah. 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 I mean, if there's anything else you want to talk about, please. No, okay. I'm, I'm I want to make sure that we cover everything that everyone wants to talk about. I like what I just heard about conditional. That's that mm -hmm. to me makes more much more sense with all the issues we've been having in our discussions mm -hmm. that were so site specific or something that could happen, mm -hmm. not just like I'm building a house. Right. And it does yeah. put another um layer or like the public or participation on yes. the yes. in the mm -hmm. Yes. And if you guys like it, then that's consensus. Well, it's not a free it's not a free if it meets the code. If it meets the code. Yeah. No, well, it needs the code. I don't like it. It's I mean it's a balance, right? It's yeah. it, the pro to it is that it, it's more community involvement and mm -hmm. the another and the BZA looks at it and evaluates some of these conditions and so on. The, the downside is um, that it's an additional step, but it's 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 more time, more energy, more resources, and so on to get through the process. And a lot of what the BCA could put in place from a conditional perspective, the Planning and Zoning Commission could do also. So I mean, there it's it's balanced. Well, once something yeah. done, you might as well do it right <laughs> and mm -hmm. make everybody as agreeable as possible. Yep. yep. I'm glad you didn't say happy because it, <laughs> <laughs> it never makes anybody happy. It never makes anybody happy. <laughs> All right, are we done with decommissioning then? So it sounds like we're done with decommissioning and solar panel materials. Do we move on to other? Do we want to go in the order that we've got here to for me? I, well, yeah, let's, well, let's, I think we can, let's talk about the environmental impact. Um, it, and I'm not sure if it was this group or if I saw it in some documentation or whichever, but there was, or maybe it was Commissioner Vigliotti who, who mentioned the idea of paying into an environmental fund um, so that if there was environmental damage after the, um, the panels were removed, that that fund could address whatever issues were, were were encountered, right? Uh -huh. um, is that the land the bond is that? Um, No, this would be separate from the bond. This would be a, a general fund of but who pays is what I'm asking. The, the solar developer would put the money developer. into it, yes, to cover future issues. This is the idea. I, that this is the idea. Right I understand. Right? Yeah. Um, who would administer it? I guess the county would administer it. Yes, my concern with it is that we don't do this for anybody else. Yeah. How do you it's like, it's like, what are the rules? What are the, and yeah. so on. Um, I mean, there are lots of, of industries out there that could potentially contaminate groundwater or potentially cause issues. And this isn't done by uh, for anything else. Um, gas stations. We don't require the gas stations to put pay into a fund to address leaking of, of tanks. Uh, it just it isn't done. That's not, I'm not saying that it couldn't be done, but if the commissioners direct us to, to establish it, we'll, we'll establish it. But we might um, need to there's no precedent. Given to do it. Yeah. Like I, you couldn't just say, we're going to do this. We might need something passed by the General Assembly to right. do this. Yeah. So I'm just, it's a topic, it, it's been raised. I appreciate your, well, all of your thoughts on it. Has it ever happened that there was some in, when it's that environmental? impact or something that was impacted that was not settled you know out of all the process so somebody had to pay for it if you know well, i'm not sure if we're thing. talking about solar we mm -hmm. didn't talk about the impact of some right. of the things the decommissioning right so the normal way things like this occur is that it's done after the fact right mm -hmm. is and pfos we've talked about that as a perfect example 
Um, we've been manufacturing PFOS for 60, 70 years, right? It's only been within the past 20 years, depending on who you talk to about it, that we realized the health concerns with it. So the EPA has been going through the process of doing the medical studies and so on to determine what levels are an issue. And it wasn't until this year that they passed or they passed draft um, MCL requirements for drinking water for PFAS. So, okay. Yeah. So um, that those haven't they're in draft form. It won't be. It'll probably be the end of this year, beginning of next. That um, that EPA will pass. Those, those MCLs, which say that in the case of PFAS, if you have greater than four parts per trillion of contamination in your drinking water, you have to, it has to be um, um, mitigated. You have to clean the water. So, and then EPA, then the, the states, MDE, would then adopt state regulations for that. And it would take over the next three or four years to get those in place and so on. So that's kind of the normal process. Having someone contribute into a fund that maybe someday in the future there may be an issue. There's, I would struggle to quantify how you would do that and if we even have the authority to. Yeah, but, I have to justify if somebody put money aside for something in the future that you know nothing about. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just, maybe we need to, in our meeting with the commissioners, we, we need to address that with Commissioner Bigliotti and how we yeah. arrived at that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and then I'll just make one. Oops, sorry, sorry, Brenda. I'll make just one cross reference here too, because in the I've sent the language to Brenda for Kent County in Delaware, um, and that was based on soil testing. But I think the general premise works just for environmental impacts. Generally speaking, it goes to their state agency to determine mitigation and process, and um, as opposed to you know, falling on the, the county shoulders. Um, so I think I think that's kind of what Chris was suggesting here, which is that the the state is going to be probably adopting what EPA does and maybe going above that, um, and would be kind of the appropriate entity that would have the resources and the expertise to you know take it on. Yeah. What what I was going to say is when that brought up before is. There would also be like something could be reflected in the decommissioning plan. And if it's reevaluated and if there is testing, like you could actually ensure that the bond is going to cover remediation because it has to be restored. And if restoration includes remediation, that could be part of that bond so that you know it was addressed. Right. Mm -hmm. The bond's going to be seven digits. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they are. Once I've looked at, surprisingly, they weren't as much as I thought they were. Yeah, well, thought... around 100,000, say, for two megawatts. Maybe more in some areas. But it's site specific. Mm -hmm. But like I, the ones were like, that I saw that were two to three megawatts were between 100 and 300,000. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, North, North Carolina, uh, the North Stanley County, um, theirs was derived cost for a minimum, I think it was like $100,000 per megawatt or something like that, was, was kind of the rule of thumb that they used. Right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That doesn't buy some of that much. Well, but, the, but the, if you think about the, the level of construction that needs to be done, it's not a significant level of construction. I mean, you're, you're basically, it's destruction. You're tearing things out, hauling it away, and then maybe a little bit of grading and, and stabilization. It's not a big construction project. I mean, there's there's for the unknown. There's a lot of added for the unknown. It's insurance. Yeah. A lot of solar panels that they have three really copper. There's no host in the ground. They're sitting on concrete slabs on the ground. It's just a matter of going out there, picking them up, and moving them out. Uh -huh. And everything's mm -hmm. gone. What about the concrete? The concrete is part of They're sitting on a concrete pad that's on top of the ground. Mm -hmm. and that's what the hosts are, are into. So it's just a matter of going out, picking the whole thing up, putting it on the back of the truck, and there's nothing All left. Right. There's nothing left. Um, I know where my granddaughter's uh, farm is, uh, the way they're constructing their system, and it's close to 100 acres. They're just the, the posts that are holding the panels. 
they're just being driven straight into the ground. They're not they're friction posts. They're not pouring concrete around each post. They're just yeah. driving them into the ground, and, and then it's just a matter of pulling, pulling them up, and you might have, you know, small hole like that when you pull them up. So there's really, when you look at it, the things that are going to be the most primary at any solar site are going to be things like your fencing, uh -huh. any concrete pads for uh, the transformers or any electrical equipment or anything of that nature. That's the big things that are going to be need to be removed. And in reality, that's not a lie. No, really a lot are, the, are the holes? I mean, the they, they need to go in there. They do, and they and they determine how how deep they have to go. Mm -hmm. So, like I say, it's just a matter of a fence post. You just drive it straight into the ground, mm -hmm. and you know it's it's down into the ground part like a pollen that it's far enough that the friction that's holding it in place is enough to keep it there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of those. Well, yeah. I know mm -hmm. at her place, I know there's post at each end, and then they have a, a, a beam that goes across the middle of them between them, and all the panels sit on the beams, mm -hmm. they're not individual posts. So it's like only two posts or maybe four or five panels that they're sitting on. So like I say, it's, sometimes it's not a lot taking mm -hmm. stuff out, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to pull out of the ground, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Same with fencing. Fencing usually doesn't have concrete around it, it's usually just driven into the ground. If you need to remove it, it's just a matter of pulling it up and out of the way and it's done. So there's not a lot of cost in removed. You know, when we talk about the quality of the panels mm -hmm. and the reserve stand on the whole time I've been thinking, well, what are we doing with our commercial solar arrays that are out there? Mm -hmm. Aren't the standards the same? Yes, yeah, the same so we reinvent the wheel, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I'm suggesting that putting in the county code requirements of, of where you're going to take them and what you're going to do with them is it's it's an all the site that's on. Yeah, yeah. If you need it needs to be removed from the site. We absolutely don't mm -hmm. want like to dig a hole and dump them in the hole and cover up and, and stuff like that. No, that's well, the yeah. point is we yeah. unless we go back and change commercial, mm -hmm. we've already got. Well, we also have to remember it's it's just not solar. Community solar right. and, and commercial solar. Mm -hmm. Panels are all over the place in the county. Some of them are in the, on, on the ground. Some people put them on the ground because they don't have a roof that can fit it. Mm -hmm. Or they're on the roof. Yeah. And what are they going to do with those panels when they decide to get rid of them? Yeah. Where they, they, they fail and they need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a not just this subject, it covers them all. Yeah. So I, and I, I asked that question because one of the things that we've never talked about is. And I assume it's covered elsewhere. Batteries, mm -hmm. batteries storage batteries. Mm -hmm. So we haven't talked about that. That's a real problem. Right. But I assume, you know, actually assume, but I assume <laughs> we already covered that. It's covered in the electrical field. Yeah. yeah, you have to meet certain standards yeah. and you have to be installed a certain way and hooked up a certain way. And, okay. and with them, if they go bad, you need to remove them. It's just like any other battery. Same with the electric car. You have to remove the battery on the electric car. Other than the fact it's going to cost you twenty thousand dollars to get a new one, is they're having trouble disposing of the old ones because mm -hmm. the old ones can't yep. work. Yep. So yeah, they don't last very long. No, they don't. That's all. Um, when you were talking yeah, about the 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 damage on the building spot, the project, the wrapping, it said six to eight feet. Chopper can that was an answer to a question that I asked Chopper, mm -hmm. and they said six to eight feet. Like I say, it, it all depends A and soil type, but, type of but all it is is the galvanized steel. Part. Yes, and it's mm -hmm. it's just driven into the ground and yeah, pulled out. Yeah. The same as a guardrail on the side of the road. They have yeah. those yeah. items yeah. down into mm -hmm. the bed. Oh, yeah. It's the exact same. Same thing. They have the base. Yeah. So there's I not a lot there to remove. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, a lot of construction. Right. Just oh. more putting it together or taking it apart. Yeah. Miles One question about yeah. the decommissioning, I don't know if we're talking about it. Once it's decommissioned and everything's okay, how about any follow-up for the landowner, say every couple of years or every three years that some engineer come in, whether it's a county engineer, that says everything is still the same because as you said, maybe something doesn't show up at first. And this to me would be a landowner, mm -hmm. um, you know, something to benefit the landowner. Can you give me a, an example of, of like well, say, you know, the, the farmer who was farming the crops, it was this, you know, right in this field where your, your solar field was, yeah. this isn't happening or that isn't happening. Um, I don't know because mm -hmm. I deal with it, but it makes yeah. sense to me 
you know, you say everything is fine today, but is it going to be fine in another couple of years? And, you know, will the ground change? And maybe well, you know the that. that you don't know what's causing that change. To have once, once everything's taken out and everything's, yeah, everything's fine and meets everything, you go back and test it five years from now, and there's a problem. You don't know if it's from the solar panels or is it from contaminated rainfall or something along that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. so testing like that in the future to go back against somebody, very hard to, to pay the force. So, the landowner is satisfied with mm -hmm. everything that yes. happened at the end of the decommissioning, mm -hmm. then there's no recommendation. Yeah. I mean, I just, and, and if it's something, out there. And if something, yeah, no, good point. And if something were to happen, that's a legal issue between the landowner and the and this, and this yeah, yeah. The, 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 the county wouldn't need to get involved with that. Yes. So, um, so how how does the how does the land get restored to original condition if you had six to eight feet holes in the ground after they're removed? How how do you restore soil? So one thing is that it's till. You backfill and six to eight feet. No, no, they're, 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 they're driven in, so yeah. it's well, still there. It's just so it, it'll kind of close it, in on its own. Yes, yeah. well, I don't think that's good. But and then that's a safety thing. Like that. No, yeah. no, no, no. Okay. You're talking, you're talking a, a square pipe that may be that, that big, of, that's hollow, that's driven into the ground. Right. So but, you're only talking around the edges. It, it's moving out, but what it's doing is just pushing the ground out of its way eventually. The ground itself will settle back in place okay. and take care of that. But is it large enough that someone could step in it? And no. You know, Jessica, oh, and you're well enough. <laughs> 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 I mean, a horse, a horse or a livestock, yeah. you know, their foot could go in there. You know how big would, the horse is? Oh, so yeah. It could break their leg. But then again, you have that with any field, you have rabbit holes or whatever. Yeah. Right, but, um, and like you say, generally, if they're going to be running equipment over all this while they're removing it, mm -hmm. that's going to compact and close down the wall. Yeah. I think we have to be very careful about the word choice when we put this together because to say return it to its original mm -hmm. condition that is mm -hmm. never truly possible. Like, I think everybody in here realizes yeah. that it is not going to be exactly what it was ever before, mm -hmm. but some of the words in the current code, right, the removal of the electrical transmission components, the restoration of soil and vegetation. So I think restoration is a really good word, mm -hmm. right, to restore it, but it's it's never going to be what it was. Mm -hmm. So, right, the primary concern would be getting rid of the, the panels, the posts, the transformer, yeah, the connection four. line, any less, any. I mean, the driveway may be okay to stay, the landscaping may be okay to stay based on that individual property and are determined at the time mm -hmm. of the decommissioning plan being yeah. written. Not necessarily 30 years from then when mm -hmm. the third property owner owns it. Maybe right. they have a different idea. No one's on paper on them. I don't think that should be. I don't think that return to the original condition should be in so the next item on the list is, is definitions yes. and, and we had talked early on and I think the first meeting that we were going to put off definitions until we knew what we needed definitions for. I, I'm going to make the recommendation that we, we push definitions off even further um, because what we've talked about are a lot of ideas and we're going to convey these ideas to the commissioners. Those ideas will formulate into code re um, code requirements, and I think that's the point where we'll know. All right, we wrote this piece of code. This is what needs to be defined. So unless, unless I don't think we're going to have a lot of um, discussion or disagreement on a definition of one thing or another. If, if you think there might be, please let's talk about it. But I, I, I would point my clarity it came yeah. up a little while ago on. Our bearer's position. The class three soils mm -hmm. is it predominantly or exclusively? Because Ralph's right, you're not going to get a field that is exact. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. but it's very likely that someone's going to have a site that might be 75% class three, but 25% better, right? Well, what does that mean? When we say class three soils, I'm thinking the whole thing's class three. 
there. But maybe there should be some way room. I don't know. I'm more concerned with location and storage. Yeah. 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 How do you define well? How do you define that? I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So I agree. So I believe what we talked about when we were talking soil classification was that one of the recommendations was no panels on class one and two soils. But mm -hmm. They could be allowed on class three or or lower or it worse. It works yeah. right. So I thought that was the recommendation that, that came out of the discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that accurate? That's yes, that's accurate. Okay. It might be accurate, but it's not realistic. <laughs> Thank you much. Mm -hmm. But I think that's something we need to discuss being realistic here. Yeah. Well, and, the, and I'll just throw it out there. So, my my opinion, and it's, it's, no, it's not worth anything. It's not worth any more than anybody else's. Opinion. My opinion is that the county does not regulate any other use based on soils. So we do not go to a property owner and say you cannot subdivide your property because you've got a class one or two soils. We don't say you can't build a church because on your property because you have class one and two soils. We don't say you can't um, you can't build an outbuilding on this part of your farm because it's on class one and two soils. There's nothing else that we regulate based on soil classification. So I hear what you're saying. Well, or some can't. In other words, they build. Yeah, I call them cliff dwellers. You know what I mean? It's the land that's just fit, mm -hmm. but they build it anyway. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get a perk and put a sand down. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I say we're we're running down a, a kind of a blind alley here. Not even talking about that. Mm -hmm. But location makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Soil types. I, yeah. How do you define location around your mind? Well, I think this, that's why these ladies are here. Mm -hmm. That's part of what they're talking about is location. Well, it was the uh, Maryland uh, the Farm Bureau that said, please write this in to the new wow. solar community That's solar law, That's class one that. and two soils made perfectly for sense. That's the most valuable farmland that, that you agree. have. Mm -hmm. And they were giving a little bit of leeway that says, okay, three, if you want right. to put it on a hill, if you want to put it in soil that you have to work too hard, to, whatever. The Farm Bureau said. No, I'm with them. I'm, I'm so for it. That's where it comes one, from. Two, three, and build they put a lot of other stuff in their bill that makes absolutely no sense. And all the people that we represent are for excluding yes. class one and two soils. Mm -hmm. there, there is a stipulation on, you said there, there, are stipulations on, there are stipulations on agriculture land preservation. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. preserve a farm that's all class three. It yep. has to be um, it has yep. to be fifty percent class one two mm -hmm. and some productive three soils. Yep. <coughs> unless it's some and even that is a stretch, but mm -hmm. unless it's a classified operation that they yeah. 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 so there are you know, I'm not mm -hmm. contradicting, I'm just saying no, no, there's an always a what if and sure. yes, but yeah. So if you allowed somewhere on class three, then you would not have the benefit of the land. Conservation, the ag conservation on the rest of it. I'm sorry, the if the whole farm is um, class three soil, right, and I can put a solar farm on it, you don't want the rest of it for your ag preservation program. Well, normally no, it, w it wouldn't be. It, it would wouldn't qualify work. as productive soil. What about um, a conservation easement from um, Rural Legacy? MET mm -hmm. would yeah. probably take it. Yeah, Our environmental trust. Yeah, Rural Legacy may mm -hmm. take it. If it complies with the local board's mm -hmm. evaluation of it. Yeah. Um, but yes, you're right. The yeah. MET would absolutely take it. Yep. But yeah. as we saw, not every farm is only one class of soil. Mm -hmm. The conservation part could be a class one or two, and the yeah. solar part could sure. be one class three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But even then, it, Every farm has multiple classes of soil. Mm -hmm. There's no farm that I know of mm -hmm. that I ever dealt with in Charles County that has all class one soils. Mm -hmm. There's no farm that has all class three soils. Right. It it's always a combination. That's mm -hmm. we're we're like this. Yeah. So 
you know, that good dirt went down there one day. Yeah. Yeah. Over a million years. Yeah. A thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just running through the weeds here to try to hit this niche. And, but I, I agree with what you're saying now, but farm beer's physicians, we don't want it on productive soils. Yeah. I know, but, mm -hmm. but, but to, to talk about this is, is running us down a rat hole. Well, I, I, actually, you know, I, 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 I know, I got that. No, I took it a step it. further and defined <laughs> really? them because you asked about that. Yeah, I, right. I think define the footprint and it's fine the footprint of where it can and can be. Mm -hmm. can be on the so footprint. The rest of it is what God gave us. I really don't care. I mean, but the footprint of the array, yeah, uh, the, the gated in area, yeah. pretty there. That's that's. I think if you, if there's a definition to be talked about at this point. Or do we just need clarity? Well, so, so when I say definitions, I'm sorry, um, I'm, I'm envisioning more like what uh, define community solar, define like terms. Exactly. That was that, that's, that, that's, that's, that. that's what I was talking about. My, my yeah. other issue is the limit of the 1%. Are we mm -hmm. defining that to just community solar, all solar, commercial properties, industrial properties? What, Okay. When that's I have that definition, that's not a definition. Yeah. 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 that'd be written into the code as yeah. opposed to. Well, what are we proposing? Is what I'm asking. Is that one percent? So, like, does that include that stuff that's on industrial? Let's handle that yeah. just for a second. Or you wanted to say something? Yes. Thanks. <laughs> hey, so, in I was thinking when we're talking about productive cropland and the soil type, we may be able to take a clue from existing code, which I'd love to be able to pull from. You know, here's how we tackle that elsewhere. So we just redid our chapter 155 just for clarity purposes. And one of the things that we looked at that kept in here, we have rural design standards. This is for agricultural and conservation zoning districts, okay? And I knew we had a definition of productive cropland and we kept that. And that's what you're saying. At least 50% of the parcel lot classified by the United States Department of Agriculture's soil conservation land classification system as class one, two, or three soil. So that's a definition. So then I started thinking, where do we use that? Oh, we use that in our rural design standards. Now this is specific to new residential building lots as it's written right now. And again, it's a standard, right? So it's a, this is the preferred. And it does say, unless otherwise determined by the planning commission, who again is the final approval authority, that residential building lots, again, this is just residential building lots proposed to be created in the A and C district, shall be located in low priority woodlands or on pasture land rather than productive cropland. So it provides direction as to this is preferred where we would like this development to go, right? It's already written into the code for residential. So is there a potential to incorporate without opening my code back up, but <laughs> right, somehow like incorporate mm -hmm. language, maybe that shouldn't be restricted to residential, maybe it should be and development. Oh, and yeah. no matter, I mean, if it's a church or a school or a solar, right, mm -hmm. maybe that yeah. is a place where so we- it's not absolute, but it's a recommendation. Where is that found again? You said chapter one. 155, 155, development and subdivision of land is where it is. So it's 155035. Our, our so rural was, design standards. You're looking at the current code? Yeah. Current code. 155. Right now. Sorry. Rural. Oh, three. Oh, three. Right. So it uses the, the language of productive cropland, which we do have a definition of. And it says this, again, it's a, it's a guideline. It's a standard that we're hoping to achieve. It's not always achievable, but that is the in the planning land or uh, woodland. Woodland. woodland low priority woodland low priority. or on pasture land rather than productive what is the definition of pasture yeah land? even that could have an issue because use is the noise i don't have pasture land have in great pasture land. my code i don't know if jay does but is that not new pasture? So if I were to do that with farming right. and put sheep on it instead is that now pasture land 
qualify it first and then yeah. 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 Fence it. Yeah. Yeah. Fence it. 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 Fence Makes great development. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and bad soil won't develop. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of yeah. running in tandem. Well, until they found a, a sand mix. Mm -hmm. Until they found sand. Not bad soil. Laura, when did that go in from that? Oh, that that was always in there. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to say always. I don't know. It do, it predates the current code update that we just did. So that would have been in effect. When that development that you're talking about was in 40 acres? Oh, no, that, that was all annexed. No, that was annexed. I'm looking at this good ground. So you're saying that was absorbed into a municipality? So that's not, is that going to be applicable to Compton? But, but, there, but you ride around Carroll County, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes situated on good farmland. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the criteria with a farm that's under easement property it's under easement is that if a landowner and there are specific rules about future dwellings say a, a, my daughter wants to build a house on our farm that house needs to be and absolutely should be located on a non-productive area or an area that doesn't interfere with the productive capabilities of that farm so you, she couldn't put it in the middle of my best field Okay. Or I love it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but don't get to Chris's thing. How do you define it? Who defines that? Who? Well, with under easement, you define that very easily. There's a yes or no one. But that's still a case by case. Who defines it? Who? By the board and mouth. It has, if it's a if it's state easement, the mouth board and, decides. And that works because they're all like kind of issues. We're here, we might have population thinking one thing and farmers thinking something else. Well, it, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we kind of need to narrow it down a little bit. That's so, why I'm talking about location. You know, if you if you put it right along the road, you're happy. The solar company's happy because right there is a line it goes up to. If you go out to, and I'll use the balance, that solar. Um, Facility at that boundary boundary on uh, Sullivan Road, right? On Sullivan Road, you can't see it hardly anywhere. Right. It's, it's located on a non productive part of that farm, or it was a farm. Absolutely non productive, believe me. I agree. Yeah. I know it. So there's a big difference, in, unless they would have put it right out along the road on the most productive part of that property that's what i'm talking about location but that's not community solar that's no, they're not. Yeah, yeah. That but, but i'm making using that because it's a pretty it's a pretty substantial it's not 20 acres mm -hmm. i would say it could be mm -hmm. maybe three or four, four, yeah, four acres. acres but that's the bigger one that i first saw in carroll county right. so but that doesn't have the same requirement to be near pre-phased power no and i know and, and, and that's that's i know that we get into now this. just to, to go a little bit farther I know of a facility that is, it, it may already be in here, that, that's on a, uh, two adjoining remainders. And it's a good quarter of a mile or more to a major power hookup. Mm -hmm. But that, but that's, solar company is moving forward with that project mm -hmm. if they can. So sometimes the convenience is for the solar company. Mm -hmm and not for the landowner or the citizens of Carroll County, because this one specifically, and I know about this one very well, that it's a long way mm -hmm. to the power hookup. Mm -hmm. And it's between two roads, but it's right here in the middle of this farm. And it is a long way. Mm -hmm. It's at least a quarter of a mile, yeah. and maybe more, to the major power hookup. And on that one, there was a, a move, and I don't know what how far it's gotten in here, but. There are two adjoining properties here like this, two re separate remainders. And so you're talking about a lot of power heading out to that main hookup, sure. and it didn't deter the, mm -hmm. the, the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Do the two remainders make up the 20 acre mass? I can't tell you. I don't know. I didn't make each one. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Which project? I can't remember the name of it, but there were the joining. So what was the process? I think it is. Um, there was a total of five parcels, the five remaining parcels on this property. Uh, the land oh, and they were you know, two of them yeah. and running it. And the reason it made it economical was because they could put two of them basically on the that same area. Right. right. That it made it economical to run that distance. Yeah, because there was two systems that they could tie together eventually right. and run out. Right. Yeah. So I not just one system. So I'm not we have one. assumed that on our property, the nearest, you know, hook up was down the road, but it turns out it's underground. Mm -hmm. And that's why we can hook up mm -hmm. so easily. And, and that that is the proposed one, a few that I know about, that there would always be an underground hook mm -hmm. into it, of course. And even the code. But that. it was it was closer than the pole that we thought it was going to be hooked up to sure. my point. Sure. So you can't always tell where the hookup is going to be. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, dissing one thing against mm -hmm. the other. I'm just telling you that, you know, my concern goes back to location and what what can be obtained. And if you say, well, they can only you can only do this because right there's the main power hookup. That's not quite always true. They're willing. You know, there, yeah. there must be enough economic benefit to somebody here that they'll run these power lines a good way so well on. like I say in that case there was two fields that were fairly close together that they could tie together and run out to the main power that's that's the reason why it was economical it wasn't two separate lines being run out to the hookup they could do it with one jay that's why i'm i'm reluctant if, if this all goes through i'm very reluctant to limiting the amount of megawatt the, the mm -hmm. amount of power that can be gotten on a 20 acre field because two years from now you could put 10 mm -hmm. yep. there and they wouldn't disturb any more ground to do it. It might even disturb less. I don't yeah. know. We don't know any of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We don't and know we what that that this stuff. We don't know what. And yeah. it, it's an on, you know, yeah. the first guy that drove a, 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 a power, a gas powered vehicle beside all these horses coming the other way, they all said, that ain't gonna last. <laughs> And look what happened. So, so we're at 11 o'clock. Typically, we've been taking a five minute break. So, why don't we break for a couple minutes? Uh, and when we come back, Don, you had mentioned the idea of a limitation countywide of total solar production. So, um, we can have a week pick up. We did discuss back. that. We did discuss that. I know we did. Yeah. We yeah. just want to make sure we're clear yep. on this definitions and clarity. Yep. Exactly. All right. So we'll take five minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, stay with us. Because they couldn't have a joining, so they're not a joining. But then they could come up to a point before they really had to start running the line. Right. They could combine it and then take it out. Okay. It makes it economic. That's what I thought. Yeah. I think we had a pre submit along that, but I don't think anything's been. I don't think it's not in here. It's not in the pipeline. Is that the hood still? Are we no. still out? Are we still on? Yes, we're we're still being recorded. It's um, up. It's up. I think it's up about uh, full twenty kilometers. I can. Um, I can turn the mic microphone off. No, I just <laughs>
Is everybody back? Uh, yeah. Not quite. And here's some pistol albums. Yeah. Which is good for fun. Right. Who do you know? The man. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's two. There's two. It was yeah i'm not that's why we just had that's why we just had the printout so i didn't even go the distance to get it spiraled down until it was straightened out yeah. Right. Well, we're pretty much all back. So, um, so Don, you wanted to you wanted to talk again about um, a, an idea of an aggregate, an aggregate total amount of solar that we feel is appropriate for countywide. I'm happy. Okay. Is is that what when someone came up with the one percent? Were they think about an aggregate? Yeah, so I think Charlie mentioned um, early on the, the idea that if we wanted to limit how much solar to keep it from propagating all across the county, do we want to establish a maximum number of acres? Um, and he, I think he threw out 1%, or I think he also threw out 1,000 acres, just kind of throwing numbers out there. So if we feel that that sort of limitation is appropriate, okay, then what, and what should that limit be? And I think your point is, it wouldn't necessarily just be community solar. Do we want to make that include, um, or do you incentivize as an incentive to commercial if you exclude? No, or is it allowed in agriculture? Well, think about it. Yeah, we're so well, I'm talking about that. just the ag commercial. Well, what I'm talking about solar. the one percent. What yeah. if it include? Get all properties, all zoning. So what Charlie had originally proposed, and correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, but was 0.1% of land in the agricultural zone specifically for a limit for community solar. And I think part of that because community solar is the only one that's allowed in the agricultural zone, but it was 0.1%. So the only issue with 0.1% is from the properties that are available, we came up with 42,000 acres, 0.1% would be 42 acres. So I think 1% is a more appropriate number rather than 0.1 if we're going to talk about. Oh, right. Well, he had said the whole agricultural zone. Yeah. 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 Just to clarify, there were two. I think we initially, I think my initial, I initially think I said maybe 1% or 2%, which was, a, which was referring to the ag remainder kind of definition. And then the, the 0.1 was referring to the entire ag zone for the county. And gotcha. I need to pull, find those numbers where I, like to refresh my memory on that a little bit, but that that, that was the difference um, between those those percentages. So, so I guess the first question is, do we even want to consider throwing out a number? And if we do, what's the basis of that number? I mean, if we say it's 500 acres, a thousand acres, two, but what's the basis of that decision? If it's sort of arbitrary, yeah. I would submit that the limitations that we're putting into regarding applicability and also the restrictions on suitable siting that the solar industry has to go through, it's going to be self-limiting by itself. I don't think we're going to see 10,000 acres of solar in Carroll County. But that assumes all those things yes. will happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they don't, if one of them, one, if soil types becomes no issue, it could be totally different. But that's why I ask about where the remainders are, mm -hmm. because you could wind up with a whole cluster of solar facilities in one part of the county and hardly any in another part of the county. So are we gonna then, it's like pushing development somewhere where people don't want them or pushing. Mm -hmm. Where are the remainders? Where are they? Are there remainders that are clustered? That would, and, and mm -hmm. I, we just talked about one mm -hmm. where there's clustered remainders, which winds up with 40 acres of solar. And so that, that's why I brought the, the question up where in the world are these remainders and if, if they're going to be clustered you'd have all all but solar fields in one small area which might even be worse than anything you know you brought up yeah mm -hmm. 
Well, remember that one of the opinions, our opinions, uh, that people we are presenting is to remove act remainders from the act. Right. I mean, right. we don't even want to, you know, we believe it should be on commercial and industrial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're here to discuss it on ag. So one yeah, of the parameters yeah. that we recommended yeah. is to remove yeah. ag remainders. Yeah. 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 And so, and that's where I came up with this map, which this is um, all of the, this is, you take all of the agricultural zone, take out everything that's um, in preservation, and take out properties that are owned by county or state or, or like BG&E and, and so on. So the, I believe what's represented here are the properties that could potentially be developed for community solar. That's what we were looking for. Let me turn Based off. on what the criteria that we Yes, yeah, so, and these county, are yeah. 50 acres and larger, right? So that, that was the other criteria that I separated. Okay. Those are not all ag remainders though. No, they're not Can all ag remainders. just show ag remainders? Uh, I don't know. We did go through this. Yeah. Do we have a data set that's? We I think there is one. Yeah, we have that. You're having to down a little closer. Any idea what that would be called? I've never used it. I think it's L U E A. L U. And again, this look, this is generated, but we always tell people to confirm with development review that it's an ag remaining portion. Mm -hmm. So this was generated to get a look at. Isn't it in the existing code to don't you have the ag remainders? Or on the website somewhere, I think. Yeah, um, there's a guide to it. But it's it's guidance only so every single parcel would have to be Why is this not selected? Yeah. Lost control. <laughs> <laughs> The map that was up earlier, Chris, it included any ag property over 50 acres, basically not publicly owned, yes. including remaining portions. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what it is. It's a stupid go to meeting window. Hopefully, I didn't screw up anything with go to meeting. Uh, let's see. Uh, so. The, let me turn off. So those are the ag remaining portions okay. that are highlighted right now in red. See, what I was wondering about is were those ag remainders located around existing community development areas or um, rural villages or the like? Mm -hmm. That's what, oh, I was saying. Yeah. that's what I was wondering about. It's pretty, it's well, that's pretty, pretty, it's pretty spread seven. out across the whole county. Did I ask you to print that out for me, Chris? Um, or yeah, online? yeah, we can we can create that map. Okay, so. I'm a little confused. If I'm a, a farmer that has, I don't have a remainder land. I have a piece of property that can be developed, okay, that can be converted, not in that map. So you have a lot of farmers. I, I still say we should re remove the term community solar. I don't think it's permitted. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the question? The map does not include farm real estate that is all intact. It has no remainders. Right, so that's a that's, farmer that has 200. Right, because yeah, that's, that's the other one that I've got. The, that's this one. There you go. To me, that's more pertinent. 
Right. Now these are 50 acres and larger. Yeah, that's more pertinent. Yeah, so the farmer wants to put his property in and it includes so that they remain. Yeah. This one includes 50 acres and greater, including remaining portions of right. the acres. Oh. Yeah. So to me, this is more, this could be more of what could happen to the county than the other one. Yes. But again, I, I guess the question is, that's why do we want to set total acreage? And if we do, what's the basis? I mean, we can throw numbers out, like 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, but, but what, what do they mean? And what's our basis for choosing well, that? Well, exactly? to me, there's what it means. It, 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 and it talk, the original ordinance talking about 50 acres and then the remaining portion goes under a conservation easement. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to get at is the juice worth of squeezing. In other words, what, where are, what's gonna be left and is it worth having left there mm -hmm. as a conservation easement or not. And if you're in the Ag Center now, you're talking about, you know, is it, is it available to farm? Is it worthwhile to farm it? You know, we can get into the weeds on that also. I just, you know, my concern is always to grow the, the easement area, to mm -hmm. grow it, attach it to, to another easement. Right. Mm -hmm. then, then you've created something that's worthwhile. Instead of having a dot there, a dot there, a dot there. That right. to me never contributed to what we were trying to do in the county based on the zoning and the original intent of the agriculture land preservation program. So, you know, I might be coming from a different angle on this, but to me that's so important. And I just want to stay cognizant of that. Yeah. That's why I keep talking about location and, mm -hmm. and area and all that. I think that's right. why we're, we're pushing for a minimum property size right. to know that, um, you know, probably one fifth of that property or, or one fourth or whatever we decide on is the solar field and the remaining um, percentage of that property go into. Well, the, and the other thing is, it's just like we were talking with this one example, uh, where are these remainders? And if you start to hook them all together here, now, instead of having 20 acres, you got 40, and instead of having 40, you got 60. And now you've got a big commercial operation. I mean, they're the things that I'm I'm concerned about. I want to see what's going to be left when all this is done. I thought that mm -hmm. other slide was better. And Chris, to your point, I don't know what's acceptable in local government majority, but I see this, we had a moratorium. I say this is somewhere between, I'll call it a pilot program. Why do we limit it to a small amount? I say it's a pilot and we adjust if needed in the future. But if you open the floodgates up, everybody grandfathers in and you got uh, the, the death rate. It doesn't have to be grandfathered. Well, right. so it doesn't have to be, but you have the, you have the accusation. Right. So, I mean, the, I don't see it as a pilot program, for lack of a better term. So, why would we? Again, this opinion is the state had a pilot program for community solar, and the county and the county followed suit with that pilot program, right? I, I honestly don't know if there were incentives from the state for these these uh, for the community solar programs. I assume that there probably were, right? If there was the potential across the whole county to put solar on everybody's property, I think we would have seen those applications. And I disagree, and here's why. We just saw a $7 corn cost mm -hmm. last year. It wouldn't surprise me that a year from now, we could be talking 450 corn, and we're getting close to it now. You get down to $4 corn, and you're gonna have every farmer and their brother standing in line to rent these things out. Okay. So the economics right now is not driving Solar, gotcha. And I removed the term community. I just think it's solar. Okay. But right now, farming was last year was a great year in general for farmers. Mm -hmm. But we all saw the 80s. We know farming commodities whipsaw. Mm -hmm. You put a little stress on it, you say you're going to get a boatload of application. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah, I don't think it's our role to, to get into the economics. Yeah. No, I think this has yeah. more than yeah. yeah. I yeah, I agree. I agree with that um, comment. Just that the 
two things, I guess one, one is that I, I wouldn't sort of discriminate against folks that have smaller pieces of property and they're still, they're trying to figure out a steady revenue source. One of the biggest benefits of having, including solar, especially if you have agriculture on, you know, other portion of the land is that it is going to be a steady source of income. Pat can rely on that year over year for a couple decades. Um, agriculture, there might be some boom bust years and there's like kind of a higher risk reward associated with that. But by kind of diversifying your portfolio like you would with stocks, you're you're providing a little bit of a you know a safety valve there to continue. You, you have some assurance that you are going to receive some revenue. Um, you're not as exposed to the market like you would be with commodity prices or fuel prices or what have you. Um, but I but I agree with just the general premise that economic we we can't we don't want to sort of try to manipulate the market that we got to always be prepared for that next boom in the agricultural industry the landowners are having to make that decision themselves based on what they owe what they have they want to keep the property and their family um and that's what you know this this provides kind of an option for them but mr charlie you you can't use that an argument one or the other you can put solar on your property and sell it the next day right. and walk away and that doesn't have a thing to do with perpetuating agriculture for that family or the next family you know they could look at this thing and say all right i sold 20 acres of, of my, or of the solar company or rented it off you can walk away the next day and well tell that, tell that to pat pat's the uh, landowner well, right in front of you she's 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 fast. diversifying her her revenue stream like yeah, don't you yeah, know I, I disagree with you uh strongly there i think that oh. th these are typically people that are figuring out what to do how to make money with their land they're not doing it just to put a solar system on it and then sell it. An easement on land does qualify for forever farming. Something like this does not qualify for anything but a commercial use on that piece of ground. And so that family then has a discretion to do whatever they want. It's not going to save that family from farming forever. It, that's just an argument that sounds good as a talking point. So we're not going well, to in 25 it. years, in 25 right. years, all those panels will get removed and you'll be able to do whatever you want with it. But you can't do that with a residential development. You can't do that with a lot of other types of development. Yeah. There's actually more flexibility. 25 years later, you can remove it, put a storage shed operation there, a butcher shop, a, everything else. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think that you can do that. 25 years. years. Okay. All right. We're, we're, 25 years from now, we will lose our agricultural infrastructure. We won't have equipment dealers. You won't have veterinarians. You can't think it's reversible. It won't. It, the infrastructure will not come back into the I guarantee county. agriculture is resilient enough that it's going to stay here. It always has and it will. Unless, unless it's ruined by non use of that land there you or go. another use of that land. Believe me, yes. agriculture. Is going to stay in Carroll County. I'm convinced of that. I've seen it go from one extreme to the other, and it's always there. And we've got 78,000 acres. Absolutely. Of so, yeah, I'm saying. I'm concerned about it. Nice would preserve more land. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. To your so, point. So, well, we're making, you know, that's what I'm saying. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I just, when I, I don't want to go back to telling stories, but the last thing I ever wanted anybody to come into this office and say, I've got to put this land under easement because it's going to save my operation. If that's the case, they're too far going anyway. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. Right. And that it's a great talking point. I could have probably gotten a couple thousand more acres if I had gone out and said, if you put this ground in ag preservation, it's going to save your operation for the right. next 20 generations when the next generation comes in and says, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a farmer. Right. It's sold. So, you know, we're talking about semantics here, one of the talking points. I want real results and real answers and not talking points. But I think yeah, that's, uh, the individual landowner has their own reasons for making this decision. And if you recall, at that first commissioner's meeting, the gentleman who called in, who talked about having a handicapped child, and they were struggling financially, his wife had to quit her job, and this was a lifeline to them. To be able to keep that property and maintain a, a place for their child. To Listen, live. my heart goes out to them. But we're talking about long term community benefit here. So 
we can't base it on that one poor but child. That not as a matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm incensed they would use that as a ploy. No, but it's not it, a ploy. That is their situation. But there is a community benefit in that the rest of the property goes into agricultural uh, conservation. Yes, and I'm not, and, I'm and not, I am getting nothing really for doing that. I, that's a gift from the landowner to Carroll County. In other circumstances, the county you would have are to getting that. something. You're getting the revenue that you're I'm not getting from the only from the Carroll, Carroll <laughs> County is going to get. Well, there's always in between. You got to mm -hmm. sell a whole farm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that might be my option. And then someone okay. can come in and do whatever. And it might be worse than this. So uh, we got to we got to marry in the fact that uh, Carroll uh, County yeah. wants to preserve the goal of 100,000 acres. We want to preserve our view, our way of life and whatnot. Uh, I keep coming back to thinking about, I, I guess I would strike the terms community solar, to think solar on what properties. And I do think we need to keep production agriculture at the forefront of our goals here. And a goal that I think Chris asked a really good question. Why, why 1%? Why not two? Why not half percent? Why do we say that? And I say that where we're at right now with 1% allows us to think it through and see what happens. Because we will see economic changes and some. You know, so, so just to make sure I understand, are you talking about 1% of what? All <laughs> agriculture or what we figured out is kind of. Of residual of properties. Remainders. Or the remaining remainders or uh, 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 bank properties that could that so is it the forty-two thousand that I came up with that I think it's the it's what's available for for community solar or is it aggregate portions or is it the total? I think we have the aggregate right now. The remaining portions are nineteen thousand acres right. according to years. Okay, so nineteen thousand. So as opposed to forty-two thousand seven hundred and forty right. that you right so before for. Remo uh, removing the aggregator, so okay. a much greater number yep. of acres available, mm -hmm. larger parcels, yep. presumably, yeah. um, and probably the benefit of being able to use greater distances and separation mm -hmm. from yeah. residential uses. Yep. So you're, so let's come up with a number. So it's one percent. So is it one percent of nineteen thousand, which is one hundred ninety acres? So now you're talking about a small handful of projects potentially, or is it one percent of forty-two thousand, which would be four hundred twenty acres, or is it, or is one percent not even the right number? See, that's what I'm struggling with is you can certainly set a number, but what's the basis of it? Yeah, forty-two thousand acres. That's not forty thousand acres of solar. That's properties, and so how many properties? The number of properties would be the number of solar projects. Right. Not. I kind of agree with what you said earlier mm -hmm. that we put the parameters in place and mm -hmm. make it a conditional use, right. and then it'll right. take care of the rest. It'll it'll yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think that, I don't think setting a number is. I, I, think I, I couldn't come up with a number. Use thing is one of the most important parts yep. of this whole yep. Yep. this whole meeting here. The conditional use mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. That just puts a level of scrutiny or, or oversight or mm -hmm. whatever that is not there, yeah. and I I'm 100% for that. Converting it back to conditional use, is that what you're saying? Yeah, change it. That, that's what's been proposed. I'll make sure I have it. It's still a remainder. I'm okay with that. It's yeah. just the zoning classification. Yep, yeah, it's no longer, it wouldn't be a principle. It's a principle. Right. I'm all for that. Can I answer that? You, you don't yeah, I'm not for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just saying. Because I go back to this good faith thing. I mean, I entered this program before because I was told it was a principle permitted use. And to the property owners, it feels like the rules are changing in the middle of the game. Uh, and, and I think property rights are very important. And I think confidence in the system is very important. And the fact that rules can change in the middle of things in Carroll County is not a good message to be sending. Um, so I would propose if you want to move to conditional use, that those that are, that are currently in the system be allowed to move forward and be grandfathered in. Well, I think that's an excellent compromise. The rules did change for all of the change. residents and their No, this was a publicly vetted 
text amendment. I'm sorry if you were not paying attention at the time, but it did go through a process from the county, and there were county public hearings, and this, this went through a long process of approval. It wasn't something that just got slapped in place, and I woke up the next morning and said, hey, how can I piss off all my neighbors? That's not what happened. So this was in place, and people made decisions based upon it. And actually, and that's an important... People all over the world were and it rebounding was, from COVID. Yes, and, and probably were, you're right, you were right. You were paying attention. So four people, four people called in during that public hearing or, or that public meeting. One of them wasn't on. So three citizens were able to view their opinion. But and then all of them had their chance to do that. You just can't say, well, only four did. Well, those four did, but everybody had their opportunity to do that. As I'm saying, and I could say the same thing. Yeah. The time is a tough time. Was it yeah. 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 So we're, 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 we're yeah. developing into the world. Right. 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 What what are you doing to the landowners? What are you doing to the residents? The land owners of agri-major portions that the county, in my opinion, developed develop this crazy thing of agri-remainders that are not residential, they're not ag. What the heck can I do with this property? And you made these rules, and now you're changing them. Farm. Yeah. I have farm. Yeah. And you can develop it. Can you have farm? You can't do that. <laughs> I want to develop it right now. No, no, no. Well, you yes, like, yes. If, if, are of any of those things going to get approved? If this doesn't, if that's my opinion. <laughs> if this becomes a conventional use, I foresee there's going to be a battle and it will mm -hmm. not get and any other conditional use, the opposition will be empowered and they're going to strike that down too. So what have you done to the landowners of agro major portions? How how okay. would I actually conditional use in general? Well, is there one thing about I mean, conditional I use? Any parameters that you have to follow and what are they? That could possibly be a use. That's what I was going to send use. out to everybody. Yes. Yeah, we just yeah, allow it to look that you have can we it. write can we write language that gets put into conditional use? No. No, 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 no that's the case. Yeah. Jay, go ahead and explain. Okay, conditional use is a use that is allowed that has to have a public hearing. Right. See if it's going to impact the community more at that location. And it will at any other location in the county in the same zoning district. And that's that's the big thing about conditional use. Will it impact that location, that specific location, yeah, any you. more than any other location in the county? And, and I, I actually want to say, Jay, okay, my point being is if I wanted to paint my house in uh, all the color, go ahead. I can do that. Yes. So how do you say in, how do you measure impact if some neighbor just and I'm I'm not saying I'm for against mm -hmm. if some neighbor says I don't want to see it. Well how is that into the code? You can't. That's right. So that's why I asked if we should have some other parameters to throw on. And, and okay. just, there are just other the, points that he needs to do. You can, with condition, well, this wasn't even a conditional use. There was a case in the county a couple of years ago. Lady put up a steel fence around the property, <laughs> and and it was a I mean it was a big heavy duty industrial steel fence. The neighbors didn't like it because it blocked the view of traffic, and they were right. Well, they made the lady well actually I made the lady move the fence so it didn't block the view of traffic. You mean make, turning onto a roadway? Yes. What she did next is she had the fence company come out and put red, white, and blue slats on every section of the fence. And the neighborhood went into more of an uproar at that loop with her doing that than they did when the fence was there. And there was nothing the neighborhood could do about it. She had every right to do it, and she did it. And it was that, up that way for years. So I'm going to say it's the same thing that was conditional use. Well, you said it can cause more impact at that location. And it is, and there's very good legal reasons it is going to do that. And yes, you can turn down a conditional use, or you can put conditions on that conditional use. Yes. But 
generally conditional uses are generally approved, approvable. I'll follow what you're saying. I just say, you know, kind of like Chris earlier, define impact. Well, that's you know, the thing. Color, it's like you say, your neighbor paints his house. And you, don't play, you know, that's, well, there's nothing you can do about it. He plants a row of trees, you know, or he builds a shed that's five foot off the property line that takes up his entire backyard, which we have people in this county that have done that. And you don't like having this big 50 foot by 100 foot building in their backyard. But there's nothing you can do about it. That's what they can do. Yeah, there's 50, there's 50 some uses here on any mm -hmm. remainders. There's there's only 11 of them that are permitted, or 12. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid of con conditional use. All these others are conditional use. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so they can be approved. One well, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that I'm making some conditional use. Yeah, so I'm, I'm all for making some so conditional use. The chance of all these 50 being one. One so are you any one of those 50 is not going to happen. If any of those public uses can be put on that, it could be. But it's are, you going to are you going to be as upset with any of those other uses in there as it is with solar? Well, where are the commissioners? Yeah, that's a very important question. I'd like to hear an answer to that. Yeah, somebody put a, a strip club right across from my farm. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't like that. Well, but I don't have the old kids, so it really doesn't. <laughs> You know, that's what wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Right. But you know, I'm saying, I know, a thousand, a thousand yeah. feet, right? I'm right. not well, okay. no, 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 not, 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 no, but I want to say, I'm not going to use it. It's not on this list. I'm going to use a contractor to put the storage yard. It's the division. You can be in a residential neighborhood. <laughs> and they want to put a contractor to put the storage yard up in the corner of the property that's right next to your house. That meets all the requirements. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be trucks running day and night out of it, and there's no way to stop. The day but, but I'm saying, but under that's fine. That's a conditional use. Right. Are, 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 are we threatened by the chance that one of those conditional uses will go in and get solar? I don't think that's mm -hmm. very fair to us to bring that to this discussion. Why? We're here we're because we're addressing. Can... Why bring that up now? We're here. You're wasting time talking about. Would you be happier no. with a I'm just trying farm? to explain. Would you be I'm happier not, if I I'm did not saying that. If I'm just I did trying that. to explain to you that I conditional use. That it's a threat. Well, We're I'm here to discuss. You. I'm just telling you that how a conditional use operates. It's approval. I mean, if it's a conditional That's use. That's what I tried to clarify with, mm -hmm. with Chris. And it's great. Right. And I have no problem with that conditional use. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it out because we're. We're, we're going into discussions we've had several times in the past couple of days, and we're, we're all aware of everybody's opinions. So, Laura, you wanted to say something? Yes, just a couple of things. So, you had asked previously about when the code changes. So, I will just use it as an example. Like, we started with industrial commercial districts, and we went through that entire section of code, and we went through a code change with that. It took a long, long time, mm -hmm. and we got there. But any plan that we were processing prior, the way that it, those were adopted, and that was consideration of exactly that, right, was that those plans were grandfathered. So with the code changes that we've done, which was industrial, commercial, and then residential, and mm -hmm. then ag conservation, mm -hmm. we're just done. Each of those wrote into it that if we had a plan in process, it would continue under the old code. So I'm just putting that on the table because mm -hmm. you asked that question. Yeah. But um, is no, that without a public outcry? Too? Is there a difference? When you had enough to make one It wasn't a specific use, right? right? This was like a blanket yeah. for the whole district, right? So there may have been things, but every single use. Uh, yeah, right. right. It looked yeah. at everything. It's very comprehensive. Yeah. Right. Um, the so other thing that I think, yes, that was a commissioner yeah, decision and it was written into those resolutions. Um, the other thing that I think with this is, uh, I would appreciate the commissioner speaking to. So we had a handful of projects that we were processing. And of course, in the processing of those, you, then you start to realize, hey, if and when we revisit this, let's look at the specific wording, right? It was a challenge for us to say, hey, is the landscaping part up, right? Like there were things that we recognized from, with the review process that needed some fine tuning or could be fine tuned. 
So similar, like the, the previous board of commissioners had always said that this is a pilot program that was like reiterated over and over again, but I don't think there was any clarity of like time frame to revisit. So similar to the review process, we didn't know what was going to need to be fine tuned until we were in, in it, right? And so none of these are actually out there on the ground yet. So we have nothing to to respond to. I think that was part of the intent of making it a pilot program was to be able to revisit what the code said, what are we doing, what have we created, how has the industry advanced, right, in X amount of years. So I think it's important to figure out what that means. If it's truly a pilot program, at what point are we coming back and looking at what the code says and what that equates to on the ground, right? What have we created in Carroll County? Did we do a good job? Did we not do a good job? Do we feel like this is successful as is? Do we revisit it? And I feel like, I feel like, like that's where we are now, but is it the right timing? I don't know, but it's something I would really like for them to address as we move forward. If they are still calling this a pilot program, at what point are we revisiting it and what does that look like? So Did the amendment say it was a pilot program? No. Absolutely not. Service Commission is what that board of controversy is. 
that whole section there's about the pilot program. But the point is that it's a state pilot program that the county was participating in, which in effect yes. made that a pilot program, although not codified as a pilot program, we adopted it as true and factual solid code. So where do we stand now? It's no longer a pilot program. That's, a, that's what Laura's saying is that we need so clarification from the commissioners. It's forever. Right. But, it's but by being in code. So it, what is what can Carroll County do to say we want to do this different? So we want to say right, this. But we're doing now. So so any code right. can be changed at any okay. time, right? Correct. So yes. the code was put in place. It's permanent until somebody changes it. Yeah. The whole it's concept right. of a pilot of the pilot from our internal discussions in, right. at the county was that hey, let's establish the code. So that's permanent code. After a couple, several projects go through the entire process, let's as staff go back and revisit everything that's in code. And if there's anything that we decide that um, we could, this could be better, we go back to the commissioners and say, hey, we've, we've gone through three years, four years of this pilot program, pilot, not codified pilot, but what we consider a pilot. And here are the things that we think could be done better. And we would have presented those to the commissioners, they would have evaluated it, and maybe change the permanent code for for left it as is. That was the full extent of the discussion internally as a, this being a pilot. Anything can be changed at any time. So calling it a pilot doesn't change anything. But was part of that discussion of having it a pilot, was there an option to stop it completely? It was never discussed. Was we were following suit with what the, the state was doing. Right. The state all of a sudden changed state law and said, Community solar is not allowed. We would have had to change county code to conform. Right, but right. now the state has said it's no longer a pilot. Right. Correct. So do you have to change county code to no. match that? No, because we we did. There was nothing in their code saying it was a pilot. It was it was permanent, but it could be changed at any time. Going through this process. Well, it's always been called an industry. Mm -hmm. So solar industry mm -hmm. if we had just kept to that and said no solar except in an industrial place or commercial place we wouldn't even be sitting here having this conversation because but that, doesn't that was the first what, change that right but that doesn't conform with what the state wants so well that's correct right so okay. so maybe we can get on to the last yeah we've just got the last couple things that uh, that we've got about an hour now but i think we can knock these out Threat so. construction processes. I don't know what does that exactly so mean. Like that was just something that was brought up in them. Commissioner Vigliotti's um, points, and it was, I think he essentially was saying, you know, do we need to address these? But I, I think you know when we looked at it, we have we do have the development review process already in place. We already have environmental codes in place, and then we already have the building codes which address the electrical, like a number of these. Things. So I think the construction process is, is there that has these standards. All right, Brenda. So in that case, if you have a 20 acre solar and you want a remainder portion that's a quarter of a mile off of a hookup spot, they want to run the access road right through the best field on the farm. Can they do it or can't they do it? Yes. They, they can do it. It's part of the site development. Yep. If it's approved by the site plan committee. Right. Mm -hmm. If, it's it's if the site plan that calls for that to happen, yep. it's, it's approved. Yeah. It's approved. Yeah. So, so the planning, the the planning commission is the one who approves the site plans. Mm -hmm. So that is where if someone brought up that, hey, we don't want this road in the middle of the field, the planning commission can change that. But here's what I'm getting at, Jay. If if you're going to put the rest, let's go by the old code. If the rest of the property is going to go under easement, now you're going to have a a road to access this solar plant right through the, the middle part of the best field on the farm, which is very much possible. Uh, does that contribute to the preservation of that land? Yeah, access no, it does not. Right. It but contributes to helping to ruin the rest of that land. There's a possibility there. Yeah. What I'm saying is, yeah. does that is that part of the 20 acres? No, but it sure is part of what well, you actually the access farm. road wouldn't yeah. be part of the 20 acres. The 20 yeah. acres. yeah, the access road is part so of the 20 acres. So then you have 
uh, everything under easement except that road run cutting right through the middle of the mm -hmm. farm. Mm -hmm. yep. That's that's still that's still a remainder portion that's mm -hmm. not under easement. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, there you go again. That's why mm -hmm. I'm stressing location, mm -hmm. and that means I mean, boy, that's important to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, and yeah, I, I see exactly what you're saying. But then again, that's where you know they can propose that that's what they want to do, but it would be up to the planning commission to say, hey, you know, that's going to you're going to have to move that road somewhere else if it's a conditional use. So then like whether, nothing that they're going to do right the All right, so Either then way. so then we have a strip as wide as this room through the entire farm. To get to a specific area that's not under easement that splits the farm to, I, but that's that's well, that's yeah. the view. That's the you know, and I'll I want to take both sides here. Mm -hmm. When I look <laughs> at your plan, you don't see that, right? Do you see that in other plans? But well, you will. But, but that's part of the process as well. So so we actually send that plan over to the ag prep office. They get the initial plan, the middle, so they can comment on something like that, and they can say, "Well, that doesn't make sense in terms of the end easement." So, it's, you right? Would, you would send that they can certainly make that comment. Okay, so that's what we're we starting to do is clarify this yeah. now. Yeah. That's, that's a major concern of mine. Is to well, I, so whether or not that office would make that comment, I can't say. Well, right? Can't but but not. but. If, if they I would have the there, opportunity they would to. Well, they thought you said it was a good time to express process. Well, we do. Well, we, we do. do. We do. It will be on this, but it's hard. It will be, but it will be. There's tough, yeah. It goes both ways. So we have included them in the development review process, the plan review process for these type of projects. If we're dealing with residuals, but I'm talking about. Farms that farm. So I still if we're say, dealing with an mean, end easement, a conservation easement, which, right, but, then we are sending the plan. That, that's what we're doing. So no matter what type of property, we if, if this ends up on. If it goes conditional use, yes. No. No. That's what I'm getting at. No, it's, it's, it's already in that way. Any ag property can do this. So I'm getting it. Easement or not. Okay, wait, let's back up. I think you're, I think we're very confused. Two different things. I'm talking about the easement that will be on, according to the old, I'm talking about the old ordinance now, but I'm talking about moving forward. If this group, or we can come to come, if the commissioners says, okay, what is under easement and what isn't? And they see a, a road going right straight through diagonally. You got two triangle fields here that split with that access road. That access road is always going to be there. Right. Right. And if, if, if I can, problem, I'm, I'm sorry, if I can interrupt for just a second. You so, see my concern. No, 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 I understand your concern, but you're talking about a site by site specific thing. Yeah. That can't be codified. So yeah. that's why we've got the process by which these plans go to planning commission and concerns like yours and any citizen can bring this to planning commission and planning commission can change it. But it's impossible for us to put code in place. That's going to protect the, the concern that you've got. It's a concern. I, I completely understand, and, a, and it's a concern of mine as well. I do not want that in the scenario, but that's why, on a site by site basis, it goes before planning commission and they can revise it. And the added thing that we're, we've talked about is making this a conditional use, which means it also goes to the Board of Zoning Appeals, two different entities. And both would be looking at it, both opportunities for public comment and, and both the opportunities for, for um, changes on a site by site basis. Hopefully that, that clarifies. All right, so well, let's be frank about this. How? What are we talking about that changes back to conditional? What that involve? I'm sorry, it changes it back from permitted to conditional use. So, so the only difference between principal permitted and conditional use 
It's that conditional use has the extra step that early on in the process it has to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals and then and they um, review it and that's part of the public meeting. Currently, it's a per principle permitted. What's most of the group, I understand Pat does mm -hmm. not feel this way, is the recommendation is that we make it a conditional yeah. use so that it and, and I think that, the and yeah. question was, how do we change that? And it basically means taking that chart yeah. that Ralph just pulled out and we switch it from a commission zone or board yeah. zone. That's the whole thing. Yeah, 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 commissioners. Yeah, they would have to revert it back to conditional. And it all gets down to what we're really talking about here are site requirements, regardless. That's what we're debating here, right? What's, yeah. What would be a site that we would accept? What would be what? And so this group here, I think, is just pushing site hard. If we get it, Conditional, it would be the same whether it's conditional for permitted use if the site plan matches. So you're really not giving up much, I right? Whether you go conditional for conditional use or principal committed, you still end up having to follow the same criteria. Exactly. Right? Yes. So it comes back effect. to exactly what we're saying: so what's the standards for putting a solar array? It's on just the shore you walk through, basically. And I know that's why I keep coming back saying I, I know we're talking about remainder lands, but I still say I'm thinking ag properties. <laughs> All right, so the last couple of things that we've got here um, fire and first responders was a question. Uh, we've talked with um, our uh, fire and EMS folks, and they're trained in how to address these types of. Um, facilities. Um, they're not concerned about them catching on fire. They know how to address them. So I don't know that anything additional needs to be put in the code regarding those, regarding the potential for fire. Yeah. I mean, these aren't flammable materials. Um, they're, they're not bursting. They wouldn't be put on people's, the roofs of people's houses if they were flammable. So. Um, but one thing, I don't know if we talked about, oh, we're talking about signage somewhere. Okay. Yes. I'll bring it up under side. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that as long as, well, I know the commissioners look at all those things, they, they, the firefighter, they all report to the commissioners. Yeah. Um, is that, the, that they, they need to know that um, they're continuously trained because they mm -hmm. turnover is, and they go from house to house, uh, you know, firehouse yeah. to house, that they need to have something. Actually, Chopperton said that they have a manual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's known, then known, then that mm -hmm. manual should have gone to, you know, the local fire department. They they offered to do some training with the local fire mm -hmm. department, but the fire department said we don't have a place yet. Oh, okay. Wait till okay. So there was some training that took place yesterday at the near Carroll, uh, South Carroll High School, I believe. Um, Commissioner Aaron attended that. Um, so I would like to know, like, what, you know, what that training entailed, like, is it that they that they um, know they need to know where to turn it off, or do they actually fight the fire that's there? Um, are they hands off after they turn it off? You know, I just think safety wise, and and a potential adjoining property owner, um, I'd like to know what all of that entails. Um, we would have to get you in touch with the fire and EMS folks. I mean, they're trained and they know how to deal with this stuff. That's not our area of expertise. And, yeah. and also, these plans are reviewed by. <laughs> Public safety, so they they review them for Besides like public safety. Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. Our public department, department of public safety. Yes, the county's and department of public yeah. safety. So the county's fire engineer, yeah, Grant Paulson looks at each one of these plans yeah. to make sure mm -hmm. they comply with the um, NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, mm -hmm. requirements for these facilities. He makes sure that. There's access into the place, trucks can get around, um, safety devices are in place, all that. It, that's, I just wonder if it's just to shut it off or if they're if no, they're it, you know, they, lighting a fire. Um, yeah. And the reason I ask is because I knew of an instance where there was solar on a horse barn and um, there was a fire in the barn and the fire department was told to let it burn. Not to fight the fire because of the solar panels on the roof. I've heard that too. 
So my two cents on the fire first responders is just the, where the shutoff is. That that's clearly sign, maybe reflective signage on it. Something that's going to be easy for first responders to find when they get on site and need to shut it off. Um, somebody had mentioned roadside connection, roadside for that. I'm not sure how feasible that is because I'm not sure what component. Like if we have these, if we have 300 foot setbacks and you have it all the deck there, do we really want wires coming all the way up to the roof? I don't know. But I think that clearly clear signage that's like reflective or something, but it very likely does cover an electrical code when they go to install it to the part of the project. It is. It is. So that's where I probably look first. Can, can I make a suggestion because maybe some folks aren't as familiar? A concept, a site development plan. Can you share with us all the agencies within the county that review that? So they have an understanding of what really happens with that. I have a clear you're aware of all the two dozen agencies that, that sit around and plan. Yeah. That's, that's probably half of them. That's about half of them. Um, yeah. I've, where were we putting that online without you? Yeah. I haven't printed out a recording scan. It is online on the development reviews. So we've got on the well, Kirsten is getting that we've got on the list um, contract renewal. Um, I would submit that that's a business decision between the property owner and the solar company. I don't know that county government needs to get involved in that. Anybody feel differently? Where I, thought the, I thought the term, I thought the five year thing was brought up at one discussion. There. So, I don't so the five year, that. so five year we talked about related to the uh, the bond for the oh, commissioning, the okay. right? So there, the county is involved because the county is holding that bond. So right. we would want to be involved in that, and and we would relook at it every five years to make sure that it's efficient. So this is the contract between the the, the company and the land. Yeah. I mean, that's that's up to them. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. And then we've got lighting. I don't know. That, I mean, is is it normal to light these types of facilities? No, my understanding in um, I know, our facility, there is no lighting. I know the one at my granddaughter on my granddaughter's farm. Let's say it's 100 acres of solar panels, mm -hmm. and there's not a single exterior light that's except. Right. At the actual um, <laughs> transform stations where there's a light like outside the door or something like that. Other than that, there's no pole lighting or any lighting that's directly onto the field or anything like that. There's none there whatsoever. Yeah. That transformer lighting, um, could that be like a uh, motion activated? I'm sorry. Or the, the tramp, Jay just said there's lighting at the. But usually, you know, like I say at, at, at the door. Of a, of a unit, there's some uh, lights going to transform the unit. Um, exactly okay. what lights they are, I don't know for sure. Um, some of them are probably safety lighting so that, you know, when they access the, the panels and stuff, they come on. Okay. But there are very so there. A motion activated type of light. But in, in general, any type of site development that has exterior lighting, mm -hmm. we get a lighting plan. So we make sure that there's not lead off onto adjoining properties. Okay. Yeah. So that's part of the regular development review process. Well, I know our motion detector lights go on every time an animal walks by. So mm -hmm. you're not going to have that problem mm -hmm. in a solar site because of friendly fence. Mm -hmm. It's going to protect anything from going in. So, you know, I, I don't know what you need the light for. If you were firefighters, you'd bring in your own light if you thought you were fighting a fire. Yeah, my understanding is it's not motion detection. There's a maybe a light. A light if there's maintenance that needs to be done that can be turned on. But I'm not, not even sure of that. Yeah. I think they might bring their own generator and light. You're probably talking more like a porch light. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes, something very much. Oh, and then the last item we had, had signage, which I think we started touching on. We talked about the, the you know, for file codes and stuff like that. I think that's, that's something that they, that they do. That's in the contract that they put. 
I'd like to suggest that maybe a sign should be put out that said, um, at the same place that says, here's, a con here's the name of the solar company, here's a contact number. We talked about this a couple mm -hmm. ago about, you know, if I'm walking my dog down the road and I see a problem. So if the sign would go, maybe next right to that sign that says, um, this is the number to call if you see an emergency, if you feel there's an emergency, now who does it go to? Does it go to the landowner? Does it go to the solar company? But that would answer that question. So we wouldn't have- huh? Usually they are posted something on like an emergency contact. This that number goes, goes to okay. the solar Not operator. just what to do, if okay. it goes to this, okay. Then, then just for the record, that make sure that the signage is not just in case of a fire call 911 or whatever. Right. Is these are the things to call if you see something that's unusual or something that needs to be done. So, yeah. And I, the only other signs that I think it possibly might be posted, like along the fence line, maybe no trespassing. Well, that should be on the fence, and I think mm -hmm. they say that. And, and Could you? Is there any they say any violation of a law or something? Which I'd like to say that's still very limited. Yeah, some other yeah. I don't think it's a bad idea to also have the landowner property since you're saying that the county will deal with the property owner on those things, to um, have the property owner's information there as well. There might be things that uh, someone in the area could um, uh, could take care of through the property owner not even having to go to the solar company or something like that. So, I mean, they could get that information online if they wanted, you know, I mean, everybody's information is out there. Um, so I don't see the problem with posting that on the sign as well. I want to ask you a mm -hmm. crazy question, but sure. in a way it's perfect. Um, we're talking about uses underneath these solar panels. So if you call the solar companies you're dealing with, so I just bought uh, 50 head of bison, and I want to put them within that area. Do you have to call them and get permission? Yeah, because they have leased the property, and essentially, exactly, it belongs to them. I'm using a crazy example, but right, right. Well, if I rent it out to you, happen. right, I couldn't yeah. come in and say, "Hey, I'm going to use this spare bedroom." I mean, it doesn't work. So take a bed from that too. That's what I was wondering about. Because if you, but you can lease. You can lease that to another, like a, a farmer, if, I, if that was a, a use that they would allow, yes. then you personally can lease that to me. The <laughs> land under the social solar panels? Yes. No, my or, understanding would be that you would have to lease it from us. Okay. Everything around well, it, the, the reason that still that belongs to me. We keep talking about it's a landowner's responsibility, it's a landowner's responsibility, it's a landowner's responsibility. Well, not really. Right. Some it's things kind of, are and some things are not. Them. Yes. And you. Yes. If you rented a house. That's what I'm The tree fell on the house. It was a big one. We keep going back to you like you're going to be there all the time. Well, I am. I live yeah. right there. <laughs> you're not going to set up a Please, I'll answer all questions here. Nine to six. <laughs> you, you see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And it, it, some landowners are, are not. Nearby, you need to take that into consideration as well. I have a kid goes hand in hand with that, and it's just something I got to say. So, I did, a, I drove out to the eastern shore this past weekend, which gave me a lot of opportunity. I did see quite a lot of solar installations, right? So, but if I started to think about what's interesting is when you're driving on the same side of the road and you're driving past it, right? If there's a landscape screen, it became not when you're in motion, right? You don't see what you see if you're standing and looking in there. So it came back to this whole conversation we had about it's very site specific and it depends on the terrain and the contours and what's around, what elevations people are actually seeing these from, right? So then I started thinking about my silly question to Charlie last week, like is the solar industry doing anything that makes these like look more attractive to people who don't like what they look like, right? And if you do some online research, you know, one of the interesting, they are. I mean, there's some that look like trees and there's some, but not necessarily in this kind of solar facility because you're putting a lot, right? But there there are companies, and just follow me here, but they, they have skin <laughs> that you can apply to these and it doesn't affect, right? And so now you can like, there's like all sorts of like art pieces and graphic designs where schools have used different like educational materials to apply a skin which doesn't affect the function of the panel. 
But then I got to thinking, well, if you're 15 feet in the air, like who's going to see that, right? <laughs> 15 feet is really like this. I don't know. These are probably nine foot ceilings. So 15 feet is probably is really tall, right? So you're not going to see it unless you're in a location on an adjoining property that you can actually see down onto it, right? And where I'm going here is the, the way that the previous code was written and what we discussed, and we, we were mentioning we got a plan in for a completely literally ground mounted, ground mounted facility, right? It, it, it just rolled with the land. It was really, and I have no idea. We didn't get far enough into that. I have no idea how those are installed. Like you were talking about the book. So, and we said that that doesn't make sense because you can't do the co-location, the agro, right? Whatever we're called, agro voltaic, <laughs> right? You can't put the, the buffalo underneath for the sheep or the goats or the pollinators. If they walk you on can't top, do. they break the panels. Yeah, what they, <laughs> right. yeah, what they wanted to do that is they wanted to a widen the, the between the units and make a, a field buffer around the whole thing as, as, as part of it. And that count is the pollinator, not underneath. Right. The and we were like, no, That's that doesn't good. work under the current code. But since we're looking at this, right, is it something we should consider? Is there a way to create a buffer around a field like that that addresses that? And then are you is there more potential for I don't want to use camouflaging, right? But giving a different aesthetic to it that might be pleasing. But we're, More please. But we're addressing what is, and you're addressing what it could be. No, so I'm addressing. We need to address what is, and what it was done. Well, the whole thing was scrapped. Well, the whole thing was scrapped. The whole thing is what if, right? So the whole thing is what if. We're all in what if. So I'm just saying, it should we, if we write that out, it doesn't afford that opportunity to come in with a different kind of system. That may be more if right if it's lower to the ground and I'm standing. It depends where you're looking from, right? But do you want to see these poles and these do that, panels? Do those did that system track the no. sun? No, no, no. Flat. no. Yeah. And Laid perfectly right, flat it's a the totally yeah, different it's system. Flat. I get that, but I'm saying like maybe again it comes back to site specific, and maybe we shouldn't write it out of existence. That's my only. I wonder if that would be. Permitted based on the state's requirement now, you know, yeah. for agrivoltaics. Yeah. Um, the applicant um, had shown that I believe they had installed, in fact, a site in Montgomery County, I believe, and they provided the plans related to that. Yeah, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's installed already, right? So I don't right, know. Right, but that commercial law just got passed, so it's probably before that. I'm just thing. curious. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. It's just a question to put on the table. Should we? Should we write that out or should we stay open to different possibilities for the additional use well if you drive around the county in every you know backyards they've got these you know six by six foot solar panel things and they maybe feed the water heater i don't know what they eat mm -hmm. but um and there they're just like you know they're not flat on the ground they're just up a little, little over the ground. place now maybe that one that was a bigger one was it industrial size it was that low um so what but you see them everywhere i'm sorry so what of what we talked about would preclude that system? Yeah. So the the agra both takes having to yes. be under the panel. Well, it doesn't say that. It, oh, it's it specific. The agra takes is a state law requirement. Right. So if they can meet that for the state, then I think we would consider it meeting it for us. So Jane was saying they could spread them out like that. Yeah, they would. They would. Like I said, the panels were like flat on the ground. I mean, literally. Flat, flat on the ground. the ground. And they said that you could walk on the fence and everything, so they weren't too that terrible. But what they were doing is they were planting flowers in between them, around them, making the, well, the pathways in between them wider so they could plant more flowers um, and stuff like that. And with that piano's being Oh, and a solar and so that, for that particular plan, Jay said, no, it doesn't meet our requirements. So that's what I was saying. I don't know how you say that because you didn't have that. I don't remember the language, how it's written. Yeah. Not I think we, we say our, the original code was co-location of agricultural use and solar panels. Which would be how, well, however you want to define yeah. that co-location, right? <laughs> okay. And so could be, we would, I, I 
if we would consider an argument that panels on the ground with stuff around it may, may meet that. Yeah. Now, because the state has passed that requirement, we're going to use that as the Hegel test. Realistic. What, what do panels on the ground do with the state? That was covering the soil. First. So I can speak to this because I was the one in that meeting. They take like frames, they'll build little the plastic frames like this, and they just plop it on the ground, they level it out, and out the space. space, but they don't do mass grading. So, yeah, there's a gap maybe about this tall from the soil, the undisturbed soil that's present on the property right now. They just take the frames and just plop them on the ground, and it's like this, it's like that, and they put the panel, panel in place. As long as this frame is rigid, they can put the panels in whatever orientation the ground is, right? Mm -hmm. So, when they're done, they just go, they pick up the frames, they pick up, or they pick up the Panels, they pick up the frames and they mm -hmm. plant whatever they are required to plant there. And yeah, that's the it. The problem with that is it would be scary. As long as the panels are on the ground, nothing would go underneath of it. Right. 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 Because they are literally, <laughs> there's, no, there's no light in between or around. Right. You don't have to be crazy. Around and in between, right. right. But underneath the panels, yeah. there would be no work. Just a simple thing. But I'm thinking this is a whole different thing. It sounds like. Someone could develop a temporary solar array that's not permanent anywhere. No, but, you, but I'm thinking, I mean, I've already got to figure it out in my head. You could, you could have wagons of solar panels all over your farm. <laughs> What's the zoning for that? Are we going to talk about other locations? I don't know that it's economic. Other locations other than oh, on the ag land, land. Do you think we'll have time um, to? Did any of that in? What are your thoughts? I mean, I'm well, not sure I understand. Just, I mean, I know that Annette and I have talked about places in Carroll County that mm -hmm. um, would accommodate uh, community solar. Okay. And, you know, just on my drive uh, this past week to Maine, I saw it on, um, off the highway in some of the um, uh, off and on ramps. They had solar there that was very low to the ground, kind of what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Um, that, you know, I mean, you're on the highway anyway, it didn't really mm -hmm. affect yeah. um, the aesthetics of, of the drive or anything. So just yeah. trying to think about other places yeah. other than ag land. Right. Because right. as we already know, there are several community solar projects on commercial yes. property, right? Yes. That are moving yes. forward. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. We didn't put a moratorium yes. on no. those, right? No. Um, Correct. Um, yes. So, um, you know, there we it's another resource for us maybe right. it doesn't have to be on ag land i yeah. mean i know that's what we're here to talk about but yeah. again we don't agree that it should be on any land yeah. Yeah. So, so is yeah. there time and activation suggestions okay from a lot of people that okay. sent these suggestions yeah so, specific places within the county some are specific okay you know, the south carroll industrial park the hampstead industrial park eldersburg business center it goes on and on carroll county commerce center Courthouses, libraries, carports, this mm -hmm. is for they're all allowed now. gas stations, yeah. overhangs, they're all allowed. They're all allowed. Yeah. 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 Well, but this is this is thinking out of the box. Right, you know, right. Do you have to put it on at, on parking lots, landfill, unused shopping mm -hmm. center parking lots? Yep. Can you put solar panels um, under power lines? Yes. Can yeah. you put under pipe right. lines? Four pipe, whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of property. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, it's mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah, like uh, the Carroll County Ag Center. On the rooftops of the ad sure. center, Pine Run Park, Landon Park. I got, yeah. I mean, yeah. so, you know, here's here's a little thing that I added to the yeah. What about a countywide contest to identify sites with prizes for viable <laughs> suggestions? What about competition from private businesses for ideas? Is there any government or private funding support available to subsidize for solar other than ad? So That's I, the question. I guess the, the general thing that I would say is that most of the, the locations that you talked about, it's allowable. Mm -hmm. So, but the county as a government, we do not promote uses. We said zoning. We do not promote uses. So we identify that this property is zoned, say, industrial. Mm -hmm. We do not then try and push a certain use on that industrial, industrial property. If, if the property owner wants to put solar, great, it's, a, it's an allowable use. If they want to build um, a factory or whatever, there's a whole list of things that we allow, but we do not push one use or another. 
And that's kind of a misconception on a, on a lot of uh, uh, projects. Um, there's, you're probably familiar with the, um, the self-storage unit being mm -hmm. proposed and done um, uh, on Carroll Highlands. The county has not pushed that we want self-storage there. We only zone it as commercial, and then it's the property owner who comes in and proposes a use. And if they meet all the codes, then it can be built. So what you've proposed, all those locations, it's, it's, from everything I've heard, they're all allowable uses. So it takes the property owner to want it going and put it there. We, the county, don't push it one way or the other. But to well, meet the, an alternative, to meet the, the state um, requirements of how much solar we produce in the county, mm -hmm. could some of the county land then be proposed towards that? Sure. And, and, and the, solar? Yeah. So just to be clear, the state has not dictated any certain amount that we have to reach. Okay? It's, it's a, from a state perspective, they have the same <laughs> goals that they've set. But they have not come to Carroll County and say, thou shalt create this amount of solar. They haven't done that yet. Okay. okay? Um, and there are projects on county-owned property where we have put solar. Um, out at the community college is a great example. But not community solar. Well, but there's really no... So community solar is just a business model, right? right. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, Although technically, yes. what that the community college and hood canal is it is a form of community solar if you look at my booklet it's that AMEN, the aggregated, aggregated net energy metering mm -hmm. and, and where the community comes in is that the so county is stuff well it's not the super it's just that the county itself is a lot of different county facilities are benefiting from one solar so it's a similar thing you said rather than subscription it's um the county itself has multiple meters being benefited from that facility. How about the sewer plant in Manchester? I think that was sewer. Sure. Yeah, that's one of Yeah, them. there's a lot of solar yep. right next to that. Yep. So does the county then negotiate with all these people just like the landowner does? And then mm -hmm. who gets to, so then if they sell? Well, well, they the county's not selling it. It's, 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 it's for the county. It's for the county's energy bill, and not the county isn't selling, selling it. Selling it. Right. So, so the, over at Manchester, this sewer plant, that's only to run that sewer plant. Well, the, the energy generated, it's kind of like the community solar, where it's not on your property, right. but it still credits your bill. So that that facility may help it have energy for the waste treatment plant, but there might also be enough to help pay for part of the, this building's energy cost. Same with community college, or are they right. separate entities? They're, well, they're, so they're all owned by the county. Yeah. They all credit the county's energy bills, no matter which meter. Right. So the more the more we promote solar on on uh, Carroll County owned property or controlled property, the better all the citizens are. So should lower our tax bills. Yes. And offer them. I've just I've just come to right? Yeah. Just an alternative. Yep. Yeah. We are believe the number one solar installer or producer in the county right now. We have the most facilities, probably the most acres of solar panels. The county's already gone pretty far to, to establish a good um, situation there with solar being generated and crediting our accounts. I just, I mean, I know it's very, very hard to do, but I would like to know what the goal is and where we are as far as generating capacity. So it's all about megawatts and also you know, I don't every, think the county has a, a goal, a specific goal for the county. Yeah, and maybe they should. Uh, I, I would think, I would suggest that their goal would be to power all county buildings. Mm -hmm. And what I'm looking at, Jay, is, is priority. So where should we set the priority of where we're going to put this goal? The, 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 state, the state does have a goal, goal or requirement, I guess, of RPS for 14.5% solar generation meeting the load of the whole state um, by 2030. Uh, and they're nowhere, they're not, not on path to do that. So I think that right now, and there's probably going to be legislation next session in 2024, there's kind of a reconsideration of how are we going to do this? And is that too ambitious of a target? Um, so right now they're, they're falling very short of, you know, the trajectory that's needed to get to the 14 and a half percent by 2030. And they're really working on that. Um, I can tell you, if anybody's interested, 
um, the state is looking at solar uh, siting and they're going to have a committee. I heard this about a week ago from Katie Esther. Um, and so if anybody, they're looking at alternative sites to put it on mm -hmm. because their list in the in the bill is only so far. So they're mm -hmm. looking at specific sites. So it's something that they, they're pushing mm -hmm. at the but state level. Okay. Anybody want to join? I said, no, I wasn't. <laughs> in August, the technology, we hope, gets there, but they're not there yet because when they are there, bg &E will do this on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that big picture. Mm -hmm. I, I think big, we big picture devalue the first industrial property by doing it. Solar takes up land. It doesn't, it's not a, like, you know, where you build a power plant and it's generating a lot of electricity and it's on a small footprint. I get it. It's going to take a lot of land mm -hmm. through solar panels, mm -hmm. whether it's on buildings or whatever, to generate that same mm -hmm. Only solar panels are really based on the battery backup. So we're we're breaking up into a bunch of individual yes, conversations. So yeah, are there any other? We've got half an hour yet. Are there any other topics that, that people would like to discuss? Well, I'd like to make a suggestion about the, the, the wording you you shed to say that that um, along uh, you shed properties where you consider you know like you have a, a garden establishment, you have some place that you want to that that is uh, a historic perhaps place in Carroll County that you don't put solar allow solar within a certain distance from one of those okay. areas. And they're called view sheds um, yes. because, um, here it is, it's called a view shed. An area of land, water, or other environmental element that is visible from a fixed vantage point in context with historical preservation. View sheds may be described as area of particular scenic or historic value mm -hmm. that are being worthy of preservation against impact resulting from development or other forms of change. Yes. So those areas could be, um, Certainly, banned from or whatever you know. Yeah. Do we want to say a thousand feet or mm -hmm. you know five hundred feet? I don't know. But I think that's really important in the name. Yeah. And so sure. yeah, I saw your uh, barns. If you yeah. make the barn tour with quilts, it is fun. Yeah. It's way fun. So <laughs> that that language al like already <laughs> exists in the commercial and industrial section yeah. of the code. And so um, we, we can recommend that that same language get put into the community solar. That'd be great. Yep. Um, this is a touchy subject, but I'm going to bring it up. It's what I call visual impact analysis. Okay. okay. And what I'm talking about is what Patricia's going through with the visual impact of, around her neighbors and her neighborhood. So. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to suggest, if not recommend, that the solar company representative, you know, go into the community with a tool that asks questions like, how do you feel about solar? How do you feel about this? What is this? You know, so that the community is made aware of that and has an opportunity to say, yes, we do, or no, we don't. Mm -hmm. This is all about the feelings that came out after it got known. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, I'm just throwing it out there mm -hmm. um, that they take up that tool and they present it. Um, yes, we interview the, the neighbors, we interview the neighborhood, and they say they're fine with this. So you're not mm -hmm. going to have any problems mm -hmm. down the road um, with with that. And I think I think it's a valuable tool. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to prevent what happened in in 2022. You know, when all of a sudden there was a TRC meeting. And nobody knew about it. I think right. that would prevent a lot of that. At yeah. least the community would be a little aware. So yeah. I'm just so, throwing it out. Yeah, no, that's a great point, and it's it, that's a topic that we often talk with uh, with developers of any type of project mm -hmm. that we recommend that they reach out to the the community um, and, and what is the community feeling about what they're proposing. Um, it's that's become something difficult to put into code because our code already allows for a process that allows for community input and so on. So 
the TRC meeting is, is a public meeting. Um, Planning Commission, both the concept review and final approval. If we go the, the uh, conditional use, then the BZA um, hearing is a public meeting. So I think we have all those opportunities that are codified into our process. Um, the extra step of a developer going into the community and so on, absolutely we recommend that, but it, that would be something difficult to, to quantify and require. Because then you start getting into, into how do you even quantify that? Um, we often joke that um, we, uh, we're not required to post properties when there's a um, TRC meeting. Um, but we go ahead and do that, right? And we also we also send postcards to the adjoining property owners. Inevitably, we'll get property owners that are outside of the the of who we mail to that say, "Well, why wasn't I contacted?" Well, then we expand the list, and then and then we get contacted by somebody else. We've joked that we could send a postcard to every citizen in the, in the county about a project, and then somebody in your county would would complain that they weren't notified, right? So there. It's difficult to quantify those efforts to require a developer to, to make those contacts. But we encourage it, absolutely, because we feel it's, a, it's like you said, it's a great idea, but to quantify it and put it in code would be really difficult. But I brought it up. Kirsten knows what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, I, it's a great <laughs> idea, um, and we encourage, absolutely would encourage developers on any type of project to, to do so. I know those cell towers, they need that. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? We definitely prefer that we're not the first people that a neighbor talks to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yes. recommendation. Yeah. And, and to be honest, there have been a lot of times, like you say, I know some of the solar companies have contacted people in the community um, before I even knew about them wanting to mm -hmm. put something there. And mm -hmm. I'm getting calls, what, what's going on with this property? I have no idea. If there's a project going on there because we haven't been notified yet yeah. right or no plans have come in so we have no idea but they're they are talking to neighborhoods yeah patricia may i ask you a question mm -hmm. how far down the road were you with the county on this when all this happened we have um a concept site plan that was submitted to the so you had submitted it and then stopped there yes okay other projects are further along. Mm, actually, I don't. No, we, um, we don't have any projects that have gone to the planning commission. Spring Valley Solar across the street from the net is probably the furthest along. However, it's still in that concept site plan phase and it has not gone to planning commission. So a lot of the projects have come in. So the process is it comes in. We have that public meeting, TRC meeting, and then it goes through a few rounds of revision of concept before we go to con uh, concept. Planning Commission. Nobody's made it to that mark yet. Spring Valley was close, but nobody's made it to that mark yet. But that doesn't mean that they haven't spent a lot of time doing it, though. We've helped with multiple submittals for that project. We might have gotten a second one for Chatterton. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah so it's not did. like they just submitted it once and then waited for this moratorium to go into effect. It's, they were working on it. To, to that, to her credit and that whole department, what did you tell me? Five? Four, four, no, four right, submittals, sorry. five submittals. Oh, I, I don't which, know. Which says something to what we're talking about. You know, let's make sure that everything is done properly. If it mm -hmm. has to be done, it has to be done properly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's but true on all projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's always a constant back and yeah, forth back to, to, get, to, to get there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's not your typical at all. Yeah. And yeah. projects that were submitted today were two above or two or, or below uh, and we'll they all that table. match they so all one. match under the uh, as far as the megawatt capacity yes correct oh, except yeah. for the three months how many years is up the three point two that's impossible we were that, that's that's why it's much more is that they need to revise if this if they ever okay. move forward and it's still capped at two megawatts we need to revise that down which means the acreage is only at 22 yeah in north valley well, if you get that BG spreadsheet where they talk about all their community solar projects, um, the majority of them are two point or better, mm -hmm. right? That are not just rooftop kind of right. things. So yes, um, you asked for other things. Yes. One question I brought it up before, and that was uh, management or maintenance of the solar facility, not when it's decommissioned, but um, during, throughout right. the whole process. Yeah. So um, you know, that's my background, quality improvement. Um, so. 
I just think that there's a lot of things that we could do. We could have a system in place where there are periodic reviews that maybe they're done by the solar company when they just go in and look at their equipment. I know they do it by remote. You know, what do they do by remote? I really don't have any idea. But, um, you know, for, they could develop a tool that any of their operators could come in and walk the field and say, this is okay, this is okay, this, this is okay, everything's working. Mm -hmm. Then you wouldn't have maybe the problems that sometimes would come up because there's a faulty piece of equipment or, or something. Well, like that's that. the type of monitoring they're doing. The remote monitoring they're doing is of the equipment and how it's functioning. Okay. So if there's a problem, they know about it immediately mm -hmm. and they can fix it. If it's a software problem and the crew is needed, they send a crew out to fix it. Okay, well, that, that's good for that. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure that they can do that now because they couldn't before. But what about the things like the perimeter fencing? Um, if somebody wants, somebody wants to do the uh, agrovoltaics and mm -hmm. put melons, they talked about melons. Sure. You know, I grow uh, winter squash mm -hmm. and I got a fence and the stuff grew right up my fence. So <laughs> here's the stuff growing right up the perimeter fence. I mean, that's a little fanciful to say, but it could be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be happening if that's going to be generating. Um, but I think this would also help Shay when he talks about his complaints. You know, would you get less complaints if you have more people saying, you know, through this maintenance plan, um, oh, that tree is dead. Let's do something about it before we have to take it to a complaint um, so that if the process is done on a quarterly basis or wherever, whenever you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in a lot of state facilities, this is this is something that's standard. So this is just a subset of that. So okay. how can that happen? How can it be put into code? It's actually putting somebody on both the landowner and the, the solar people. Right now they do their solar by by remote, mm -hmm. you know, um, does that mean they're going to send the drone out, or is that, you know, I know they did droning um, to do some of the sightings. So anyway, it's if you don't maintain something, it's going to not work and properly. I think John can explain that last time he was here that with a lot of the landscaping, you know, it's inspected at the end of the construction, and then I don't know if it was a year later or two years later. They go back out and check to see what's happened and have them replace. That's a year. And a year. And then it anything stops. gets dead. Okay, and then it stops. Basically. These are going to be 20 years, mm -hmm. 10 years. Well, yeah, 10 years. We'll say 10 years. A lot can happen in 10 years. Yeah. There, there could be a, a uh, something, an idea that developer uh, thought of this that <clears throat> recommended you having a potential landscape bond, so a separate bond just focused on the landscaping that's for five years, which you get the plantings through enough growing season to have, you know, ensure likelihood of success from there. Um, I think the industry would be hesitant to say that they can ensure exactly what is envisioned for all 25 years, but to get it to a stable foundation, uh, you know, after five years, um, I think would be a good uh, kind of balance there. Yeah, we we take a landscape in bonds, but typically it's returned after that first year mm -hmm. inspection. But uh, increasing that to three years, five years, something like that might be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. said that's not current county policy, but that's fine. Does the county does the county have scenic byways? The state, the state has designated yeah. through our county. There's some in the county, yes. But there's state designated. So I think there should be something in there, and I know Commissioner Pitney brought that up as well, uh -huh. um, to prohibit solar fields on those scenic byways. Okay. And yeah, the commission is. Right. I do know the state, um, as part of their scenic byway program, um, does not allow billboards along those scenic byways. Um, and then I know I was laughed at with the um, 3,000 feet, even though it wasn't my original <laughs> comment for a setback. But um, I'd like to go on record now that um, we'd like 400 feet as a setback. 400 feet for a setback. Okay. 
but since a thousand feet is the um, yeah. separation is the separation default, we'll you know we'll take the default. Yeah. Well, it's separation would be from the property line. Right. The separation right. would be from the right. solar to right. the west. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Boarding on a plane here in just a minute. Um, and I'm a little afraid my phone's going to die too, actually, before this finishes, even in the next 15 minutes. But um, I do appreciate uh, this process. I think Chris and Brenna have done a really good job allowing for balanced discussion from both both sides. Um, and I just want to call that out and look forward to seeing the, the report kind of write up and providing feedback there. Um, in that development of that report, I think it would be interesting for each of these kind of different items that we've been discussing to call out whether there's a precedent or not in the county for how other uh, development has been treated. Um, so there's a, a sense of kind of like solar is getting a unique treatment here um, or not. If there's no precedent, like I think that's that's actually noteworthy. Um, I do want to also say that the, the these are multi-million dollar project and I mentioned this before you know, from a maintenance standpoint the developers got every interest to make sure that those are operating optimally because the only way they get paid is if they're generating uh, that's how they pay off the project it's a huge upfront cost and then you just pay it off over time through generation so it's in the developers interest to make sure that those are operating top-notch and it's not sort of a wild west like this is a very established industry community solar in particular is the, the aim is to not leave a bad taste in the mouths of the, the county folks um, you know, there's a there's a, an interest to allow for subscriptions for customers to participate in it, but also to have the, the project themselves uh, be something that is, you know, accepted as part of the, uh, the county profile. Um, but I recognize, you know, agricultural interests, view concerns and interests that those kind of can get in the way. And I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, my parents probably also wouldn't want to necessarily look at this whole project if it was right right in front of their property. Um, but there is a there's a balance there, um, and I think you have to respect the the landowners that choose to use that as a as a way to produce revenue for their uh, their property, especially if they're considering all the different options that are on the table. They know probably what's best um, for their land, and I think that's maybe the most important point that I hope to kind of leave with you is that respecting the landowner's uh, right to do that, and especially folks like Pat who have already started that process and invested in it based on kind of what they understood the code to allow. Um, and so if, if there is going to be some changes, and it feels like there probably will be, um, to have a grandfathering provision to, uh, you know, draw a line where investments have been made, contracts were signed, a lot of decisions were, were determined based on a code that was written into law and everyone could see it online um, and not to sort of, you know, as I said, I think previously pulled a rug out from underneath it, which is disrespectful to the landowners and just bad for business from a optic standpoint for folks looking at the county. Um, last thing I'll say, which uh, I've come back to this, and I know Chris has kind of dismissed it, um, and I understand that it is sort of arbitrary, but having a a sort of percentage cap or a, a number cap, maybe it's a thousand acres on community solar, maybe it's all solar development. Um, I agree. It's it's kind of kind of arbitrary, but it's also kind of not because there's this, you know, very voiced interest from the agricultural community to protect the agricultural land. Don't let solar sort of take it over. If you do cap it, that gives you some assurance that it will not. You know, and the 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 numbers that I had thrown out there was based on the pamphlet, the first meeting pamphlet, where it said there was 185,000 acres of ag zoned land in the county. You could say 0.5% of that, that's like a thousand acres uh, to go to solar. That ensures a lot of other, a lot more land that's still out there. Um, but I do want to respect, you know, decisions that have made with landowners already. I'm going to ensure that that um, is really the, the primary thing that gets protected. Uh, but then also, ideally, um, that we're not just going to prohibit essentially um, development opportunities for, for future landowners. I know this isn't the last of the whole discussion um, and we'll have more 
kind of engagement opportunities, but um, I just wanted to put that out there because uh, I'm, I do have to shut down here and appreciate the, 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 the polite, uh, constructive dialogue with, with everybody for the, the past four meetings. Thanks. All right. All right. Thank you. So, so can I tag on to um, Cheryl brought up the 400 foot setback mm -hmm. and again it, it's nice to be able to sink your teeth into something that exists in code and draw on it so in commercial in the commercial zoning district right now solar energy conversion facilities do it does have setback shall be 400 feet from the boundaries of all adjoining residentially zoned properties and 200 feet from the boundary lines of adjoining non-residentially zoned properties. And then it has a provision that the planning commission may reduce the required setback for any yard setback up to 50% provided that supplemental landscaping. So whatever we land on at landscaping, I'm suggesting maybe this is a good approach to utilize some of the same code language that we have other places. So it, provided that supplemental landscaping as may be determined by the planning commission is provided. So again, and then we can use tools like that site development plan and incorporating, you know, vantage points or renderings. What does that landscape look like? Anyway, so that's in there. That's how it's written for commercial. And it may be, I mean, if you just want to stick at the 400, but we do have a 400 foot in that district. And then it has some other add-ons to that. I just want to say that I, I think that Charlie's, um, comments at the end of these meetings are very strategic and he tends to throw a lot of his points out there and we could do the same thing right now we could run through our pages <laughs> of points and we yeah. won't do that because um, i don't think that would be a use of time but i yeah. will say that um, as a final point is that they're throwing out a lot of how much money the solar companies have put mm -hmm. into this and yeah. And you know, and this and that, and and to them, it is all about money for both the property owners and the solar companies. Mm -hmm. But you can't put a price on the quality of life mm -hmm. of Carroll County residents. Yep. Yep. And um, we speak for hundreds of those people, and I know you heard from a lot of them during the public hearings and the other meetings. Um, we don't have the big dollars, and mm -hmm. you know, we don't have any options either, like they do. Of, raking in all of this money um but we do have the option to stay in carroll county and enjoy the rest of our years um, with the quality of life that we currently have and that's why we're here fighting is to mm -hmm. keep that quality of life and yep. we think it's so important and you can't put a price on it so you know, we, under, we understand all of the, the points and and this is uh the commissioners will will be making the decision on it it's and staff isn't making the decision it's it's going to be the commissioner's decision so there we're going to make sure that we do our best that everybody's point of view everybody's opinions get conveyed to the commissioners so that the commissioners can make them the the best decision so so i have a question mm -hmm. for you or did you read the easement did somebody sit down with you and, and explain what the easement is yeah. okay I hope so. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to make sure that you get the, it's a different item. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, Don, you asked what it, so about the next steps. So, I'll just reiterate that. So, um, it was a, a rainy weekend, and so I started working up and rain dumping um, uh, material for the report. So, I've got about 10 pages that I sent to, to Brenda uh, that she's going to take a look at. So, our hope is, is that as quickly as possible, we'll get a report out to everybody to review. Uh, we'll send it via that email. Mean tomorrow. Today, <laughs> as, maybe tomorrow. But I, and, and, and as quickly as possible, because we want to get everybody's feedback. Our hope is that any comments on it will be minor and can just be emailed back to us for incorporation. But again, if anybody at all feels said, let's get the group back together and talk about this at this point, please let us know when we can do so. Um, once we gain consensus on the, the content of the report, then we'll work on scheduling um, a work session with the commissioners. Um, it takes a couple weeks, we have to be a couple weeks out with the commissioners because of their schedules. So it's not something that will happen very, very quickly, but we want to, because of our limited time, we'll try and get it done as quickly as possible. And so all of you will be invited to meet with the commissioners and and we can walk through each of the points of the report. And if there's any clarification at that point, 
and the commissioners have additional questions, and your, your feedback is very welcome. So you're sharing with them the same report we're seeing, or you want to we will, give an executive summary? Today no, what, our, my vision is that we would walk through the, the whole report. Now, whether we create a PowerPoint that mimics the report or whether we just read through it, we'll, we'll figure that out the best way to communicate the information. But good. Yeah. I also just want to be everybody got a copy of this from yeah. Kirsten, and you'll see that the Ag Prez program is not on here. They're not a typical agency. This is all of our typical. So, but we do add them to that distribution, the initial one, the Ag Prez office sees the plan. I just want to be very clear because it's not actually listed on there. And Chris, I'm just glad to hear that Chris that uh, Cher and I are the only ones doing brain dumping. Weekdays. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so, it's a, it's yeah. All right. Well, if that's everything, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you all.